this working? I think it is working. I think that is working now. <laughs> That's a good start. A super chat from Ugly Bob. Dancing Queen, young, sweet, and only 17 stone. Bless her heart. Uh, is Not the, me. Uh, don't know. Is the microphone working? I can't tell if the microphone is working. Someone please let me know. Um, we're trying something a little bit different with the setup tonight with the USB microphone to override the issues we've been having with the Elgato Camlink Pro, which is anything but. So uh, please let me know in the chat if uh, if the audio is acceptable, if you can actually hear me. No one's said anything yet, so maybe not. I don't know. Is it working? Oh. Quiet. Nick Barnes says, okay, sorry, what are you saying? Oh, Christ. Really quiet and have some echo. Right. I'm going to smash this to pieces. Um, right, turn it. Because the microphone's upside down, that's not helpful either. So, actually, no, clockwise is always clockwise, isn't it? No matter which, if you're upside down or not. Right, let's try one, two, three, four clicks. How's that? Is that any better? I can't see, I can see the green levels actually, let's pump that up a little bit more, one, two, three, another three, that looks like it might be just about getting towards peaking now, uh, brilliant, a little bit lighter, but that is still shed loads of echo, where is the echo coming from, I don't understand where, where the echo can be coming from, the Elgato is turned off effectively in terms of audio, so there shouldn't be any audio coming through. The cam link is muted. I wonder if it's down to that. I hate this cam link. Is the camera muted? Or is it plugged in the camera? Let's try that. So is that any better? Is there still echo? Letter says I'm not hearing any echo. Okay. Still mega quiet. Rick H says no echo on my end. What do we want? More volume. So no echo. It's low now, afraid to crank it up. Right, okay, let's see if I can... One, two, three, four, five. There you go, that's... This microphone has got no um, no kind of absolute limits at the end. So I don't know when it's on full blast or not. I'm using a headset for the first time. No echo, but the sound is low. That's better. That's a little bit louder. All right, let's see. Let's see how far it will actually go. Let's do. I'm just gonna keep on turning. I'm just gonna turn a full blast. So I'm just turning and turning and turning. That that should be it. I think. I don't think I can get it any louder than that. How are we looking now? Well, not looking. Not in car. It looks really, as you can tell, because I'm in this disheveled mess. <laughs> oh dear. And where's my Where's my uh, mouse gone? There it is. What the? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Good stuff. Uh, William Bodie says, sounds just like before. Unless it's a sound is better. Nick Barnes, brilliant. Sounds good. Hello, Mike and Calf. Sound, hello. Uh, your mouse is in your hand. Yes, it is. I, I can see. I can feel it. So I can't see it. Which is unfortunate. So yeah, the reason behind this, uh, yeah, the Elgato thing is an absolute pain in the backside. I might be being a complete idiot. There is that to it, but I've used Elgato products in the past. Uh, the HD60S, the HD60 as well, and the Camlink. But the Camlink Pro just seems to be a very weird beast. And I cannot seem to get it to work right. Now, I did pick it up as a warehouse bargain on Amazon. So potentially it is faulty. So I might have to return it and get another one anyway. Just to see, I'm looking around for my cable for my microphone, but I don't have one. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Hopefully you can bear with me. You'd think after five years or four years or whatever it is, I would know how to do all this stuff properly and get it working by now. But clearly I haven't. Anyway. Um, I was trying to get the microphone out of the shot a little bit, but I might actually bring it in slightly. Let's bring it in just a little bit. I hope this is not going to be too distracting. It's, well... It's in this, you can see it. What the hell? <laughs> Nothing else is in focus, so it shouldn't really matter. Anyway, so yeah, everything sounding okay? Everything tickety-boo? 
hope so. I hope so. Uh, where are we? Yeah, thanks for a super chat, everybody. Much appreciated. Uh, Mike is putting a shadow on my face. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. There we go. How's that? Is that better? I could do have some shadow on my face. It's bloody. I've been in the garden today and working, doing stuff, and it's actually, uh, yeah. It's been hot and gap. I can feel the afterglow now. Uh, Letter says, Mike, you're doing better with the video stuff than I ever will. I wonder, actually, if I'm looking at the screen and talking, can you actually still hear me okay? In theory, it should be okay. It is a cardioid pattern mic, so it kind of should pick up around here, but I guess I'm not looking at it. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> we do try. We do try. Domas says, hello, first live stream that I'm able to join after a wonderful summer holidays. Hope everyone is doing fine and enjoying last summer weekend. Uh, Blake Hancliffe says, let's let you put a foundation on. I could do with some. It's, uh, it's been very warm. A bit, bit of rouge. And you've been working hard. I have been working hard today. Uh, Dutch Jan says, I have to reload, no image. Well, Bill says, sound is 100%. Excellent. Uh, Way Bob says I'd bring the mic up as close as possible. Yeah, it's. I guess if I do it down a little bit. If it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. If it ain't broke, don't listen to Welly Bob. <laughs> that might be a bit better. Let's see how it goes. It's a. Uh, it's a very weird microphone. I like it. I like the sound quality of it. It sounds actually quite nice, in my opinion. Can I say hi to William? But the um, not having a proper volume control is really awkward, and I'm not even sure if it recognises or remembers settings, because I just plugged it in and it started working. But the the dial just keeps on turning, so you've got no idea where the start point and end point is, which is almost a bit of a deal breaker. But the sound quality I do actually really like. I think it sounds really nice. Angle it up a little bit. Oh well. We'll see how it goes. Is it casting a shadow on me? Yeah, it's. <laughs> Put it more to the side and twist it around. That'll do. We'll see. We'll see how we get on with that. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. David Underhill, Mike's new channel, Mike Mimes. <laughs> that would probably be better. I'm really pissed off about this cam link. Shit, I really am. It's really <coughs> bugging me. I thought it would be the answer to my problems, but it's just not been at all. Gutted. I do have another microphone which I could have used, which is a portable one, a little boy one. I could have put just there, actually. It would have been better. Um, maybe I might try that at some point. But I want to try this. It's a really good mic. I like the sound of it. For podcasts, I think it'd be excellent. Because it does pick up your voice really nicely. And it's got some relative re good rejection. Can you hear calf stirring? Just stirring a spoon in the kitchen. I think it's actually quite good at rejection in that respect. It's really interrupted. I was making a coffee before yeah. they came here. Right, anyway. Um, am I actually in focus? I can't even tell on that screen. My eyes are shit. <laughs> well, one of them is. My left eye is excellent up close. My right eye is good for distance. So, reading a mobile phone or something up close, left eye, driving or anything, right eye. Both of them are completely different vision. Do your eyebrows. No, just the eyebrows, not the eyes. I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just hurting my face in general. Anyway. Um... Well, Bill says my eyes are like that. Yeah, it's a very common thing because uh, men generally have a thing called astigmatism, which is where one of your eyes, normally your left eye, will end up being the shape of a kind of rugby ball. Rather than being round, it's kind of oval. And because of that, your lens doesn't focus in the same way. So it's like having 
a wide angle lens and a long lens. So one eye is going to be your longer lens and the other is that. So you can tell if you've got it actually, if you're a, a bloke, maybe if you're a girl watching this possibly, or a lady, um, try it. Just look at a fixed point, put something in front of you or a fixed point, probably a good six foot away, such as for me, the camera. So if I close that eye, the camera is there. If I open the other eye, the camera jumps to one side a little bit. And that's because the focal dif difference, the focal distance is different for each eye. So if you do like the Wayne's Raw thing, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, whatever you're looking at will probably move. It will shift from left to right because one eye is stronger than the other. Hence why we generally wear glasses. I should do, I think. David Andreas says, don't feel bad, you're not the only YouTuber that has production problems. Mike Salazar recently did a video and he did nearly half his script without pressing record. Excellent. We've done that many times, but without a script. Yeah, I'd, I'd do that without a, without a script. Dutch Jan says, everybody has a dominant eye. I have a dominant eye depending on my task. For driving in general things, my right eye is always better. I, got, I can actually read the number plates off of bloody num uh, airplanes when they're flying over. I'll see how many passengers are in there. I can't count passengers. I'm working on that. That's that's going to be the next one. The left eye can't even see there is a plane, hardly. <laughs> it can. It's not that bad. But the focusing is much nearer. Anyway, so um, tonight's stream, we're going to do a build in the uh, Aero Cool Player. Whenever I say player, I always am thinking of Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder playing the classic character Les Grossman, which if you haven't seen it, Quickly open up another tab in your browser and just type in Les Grossman Dance. Uh, it was at the end of Tropic Thunder and it was just Tom Cruise. Yeah, he just didn't care. He really didn't. He just let thing, let everything go. And it, it was actually very good. Is that Justin looks? <laughs> yeah, he looks really weird. Have you, have you seen it? You haven't, have you? No. If you look at Les Grossman, it's basically Tom Cruise in like prosthetics. So it looks weird. Old Man Withers, you're absolutely right. Uh, David Underhill says, I have glaucoma and astigmatism. Laser surgery three years ago solved a lot, but not more of it. I'm not sorry to hear that. I don't like the idea of laser surgery. After watching Final Destination, I think think I can do it. I don't like anything near my eyes anyway. So having one of those things to actually hold your eye open, I don't think I could cope with it. I really don't. I'd have to be literally unconscious eyes. That would be the only way I could do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> While Bill says, whenever I hear player, I think of the beach. Oh, they film the beach. No, like, what's that beach? There's a place in there, something, players. Oh, player, do, player del something. Right. Anyway, so we will be uh, doing a build in the case, if I actually remember where I put it. I keep on going to think about my microphone and where it is. Having this newfound freedom is getting very weird already. So it is under here. Now we're going to be using the same parts as we used in uh, last week's build, which was with the Game Max um, black hole. I had to think about it then. My brain actually went into a black hole. Uh, reason behind it is because I did some temperature tests. So now I'm going to do the tests in this. And see if this is actually a hot box or not. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's actually been engineered well enough to have no airflow because of the air gaps and things like that. But we'll see. Uh, Ugly Bob's come in with a two pound super chat and says, Disco laser to your eye till it's all better. It's definitely going to be cheaper than laser surgery. Let's see how, how it works. Ooh, hey, the work, it's on sign to light. I forgot about that. Now I can't see a thing. I don't think it worked, Bob. What colour are you seeing in there? Uh, actually, that's another thing as well. My uh, my vision in this eye, the left eye, is also slightly different colour, which doesn't help either. Especially when I'm trying to colour match or colour grade videos, which is why I don't generally bother, because uh, it's kind of pointless anyway. Who cares? No one really cares. Unless you're watching a Hollywood movie or something, no one really cares what colour anything is. If your white balance is out, who gives a rat's ass? And in fact, actually looking at the screen now, I'm pretty sure my white balance is actually quite off. Although saying that, that does look actually genuinely white. 
and it does look white in the room. So these look slightly off white, the desk and the surrounds, because they are basically off white because we've had them for ages. So yeah, actually, I don't think I've done too badly on the color on the camera. Currently filming at uh, 5,200 Kelvins for anyone who's interested. Not that anyone will be, but just so as you know. Uh, daylight. The white balance is good. Um, well, Bill, white balance is good. Are you? It's actually, um, yeah, it's, I think I'm getting there. Slowly. I'm going to have to change something just to mess up my shit. I don't think you messed up enough, you? Oh, the microphone's the microphone messed up enough. Right. I might change the RGB on the microphone, because that is a bit distracting, actually. So let's uh, let's go to color fade. You can turn the RGB off for this thing. There's actually a review. I did the review for this yes, yesterday, sir. and it's a bizarre microphone. It was sent to us free of charge from Streamify, and it's part of their like uh, streaming kit. I want to say it's professional, but I don't think it's, there's a pro version as well. But this, the one they've sent, isn't the pro version because they realise obviously that I'm not a professional. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so here is the game, not the game max, not game max, it's Arrow Cool. This is the Arrow Cool player. A hum is coming from the mic, mate. A hum? Mm -hmm. oh, for feck's sake. Is anyone else hearing a hum? It's only is anyone hearing. else hearing a hum? Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Really likes that mic, Mike. He really likes that mic. Oh, Tech Soul says, yeah. yeah, so there is a hum. So where the feck is a hum coming from now? What I've done is change the RGB. Right, if I turn the RGB off, does the hum go? That will be an interesting one. Right, Ready. RGB is off. We are saving money. Is there still a... No hum. Oh, right, says there's no, no hum. It might be a very low hum coming from the PC. Because the fans and all that shit's wrong. Uh, William Bodie says now it's off. Sounds good to me, but I'm not using headphones. I think it's if you're yeah. Um, the hum is because the mic doesn't know the lyrics. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. That is very good. Right. Anyway, back to introducing. Uh, there is a phenomenon around here with the Bristol hum. Oh, there is the Bristol hum, yeah. It's not just Calf's butt cheeks on a night time after he's had too many beans. Oh. Led there, snor <laughs> snor you. snoring out of one end, <laughs> farting out of the other. <laughs> that was a demonstration of the ass cheeks, by the way. Um, horrible. Anyway, moving on. So this is uh, this was actually kindly sent to us by Ugly Bob. Thank you, Ugly Bob, for sending us this very bizarre-looking PC case. The front of it, for me, I think, is actually very reminiscent of the uh, Xbox. I'm not sure which one. Possibly the Xbox 360, maybe. It's got a slightly unusual look to it. On the front panel, very sort of blocky and square. Very Xbox-ish. Uh, we've got a little bit of acrylic here. Or is it glass? I don't remember, actually, if it's glass or... Does it pull off? No, it must be tempered glass. I can't tell if that's like glass or not. If I hit it with something metal, that'd do it, wouldn't it? That's glass. Right, so tempered glass front, uh, so you can see some of the RGB glow from the inside, which I'm not too sure what fans I'm going to put in here, if I'm going to put any fans in at all, to be honest with you. I might just wing it and see what it's like at Unatral. And if I need to put any fans in, I can do. There is a fan included in the back, which is just a, uh, I think it's just a standard, yeah, it's just a standard fan, no RGB at all. It's gotta be an interesting one, this, it really is. So for those of you that didn't watch the video yesterday, I think it was the review, uh, ATX case, got a bit of ventilation on the top, radiator mounts, etc., etc. In terms of actually air intake on this thing, there isn't a great deal. There's a very, very Got small slit of um, the sides. There's a few slits down there. And there's a little bit 
on the bottom as well where the handle is but essentially that is kind of it so you're hoping that there's going to be some kind of nzxt negative airflow single fan on the back ventilation on the top usual kind of stuff going on down the back here but yeah so i wanted to oh that was it there's also an unusual feature is the fact that you can actually take out the power supply basement which i'm going to do actually right now i've got that other light on as well let's get a bit more light on things Using our chairs in the way. Not really. So something which is actually really unusual on this as well, something else unusual, is this bit on the side. So this is our uh, I.O. panel. So you have got two USB 3.1 uh, headphone mic jacks, reset button, power button. But the, um, the bits there are illuminated RGB to match the front of the case, which is actually very cool. It's unusual and it's very different and for that reason alone I like it because it is very different and there isn't also chat mic. oh yeah sorry clear pop-up is it a big case um well it's it's a standard ATX case it's not micro ATX so it is a kind of a normal case for front, want of a better word everybody thinks the front looks like the old windows logo yeah it does a bit actually yeah the kind of the flag sort of thing. What's that noise? That sounds like a cat being bloody mauled to death. Hopefully not one of ours. Does it? Yeah. It's probably foxes. Righty. So that is the uh, the inside. Voila, basement section there, this bit comes out, um, I can't remember why, I recorded the video so long ago, I can't remember why it, I thought it was a good idea, I think it's because there wasn't a huge amount of room actually underneath for a power supply, so I've deliberately chosen a power supply which isn't modular, just to make life even more difficult, so yes, that's very helpful. Uh, Glenn says, I like the RGB around the buttons. Yes, I uh, I am tempted to agree with you on that, actually. It's uh, very much like the Inwin 101C, I think it was. Or is it the original 101? I'm not entirely sure. So, in the back, uh, not a massive amount of room. So, this bar here isn't removable. So, power supply-wise, it's going to be tight. And, uh, yeah, I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to struggle on a stream, I might as well do it with my friends. So uh, they weren't available. So I'm doing it with you guys. Me making out I've got friends. Um, right, so that was the case. Anyway, let's put that to one side for now. Oh, sorry, hit the mic. Can you tell everyone that I bought a game last week? Oh, yeah, Kath did buy um, her game last week, Stray, and started playing it when she first started playing it. Stupidly, rookie error, she left uh, motion blur on well, I wouldn't know how to do and uh, felt sick as a dog for two days. <laughs> so, sick as a cat. So, yeah, that didn't work out well. Oh, actually, I know I need to try something. I need to try to see if the overhead camera is working and if the audio works at the same time. So I can still see the audio coming through. So is it uh, is it working? Thumbs up or is it not? Thumbs down. Let me know in the chat. Uh, Dutch Jan says, Mick, the RGB is off. Uh, Glyn says, audio is good. It's still working. Go on, do your congratulations button. I'll do my congratulations button in that case, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a dipstick. <laughs> right. Like so, parts-wise, no surprises here. It's going to be basically the same as what we had last week, but for those of you that couldn't make it last week, for whatever reason, God, my shoulder's killing. Um... Asus Prime B550 Plus. We do have Aura Sync on here, but not necessary because the board... Um, I don't think there's actually any way of synchronizing the RGB with anything other than the what is actually there, or possibly yeah, <laughs> the microphone if I'm lucky. So uh, that's some other board we're going to be using. Processor-wise, we're using a Ryzen 5 3600, as you can see, 6 core, 12 threads, 4.2 max boost, 3.6 gigahertz base. Uh, this is the OEM. Not an OEM, sorry, retail one, so we're going to use the retail cooler, because why not? 
memory wise this was a uh, bit of a mistake from uh, Mr. Aitken who sold these very cheaply to me I didn't realise it at the time but it was a very good deal so happy days although RAM at the moment is kind of dropped off uh, that, oh, the, yeah the RGB from the mic is off I'm going to put it back on Let's see if it makes a humming noise is it making a humming noise now? Actually, I don't care. Um, so that is the RAM. So DDR4 uh, 3200. CL 1.6. or Sorry, CL 16. 1.35 volts. Will this build be for sale? Um, possibly. Likely. Maybe. I don't know. I'll see how well it does, actually. Rick H, question, is the Ryzen 5 through 600 a good processor? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's actually probably one of the best value for ones on the market. Unfortunately, graphics card-wise, this isn't one of the best deals on the market. This is MSI's uh, GTX 1650 Ventus XS 4G OC. Or GTX 1650. It's actually not a bad little card. And to be honest with you, running with a Ryzen 5 through 600, it's absolutely fine. 1080p games, going to be getting 100 frames per second in most games. Actually performs pretty well, very similar to an RX 580, that sort of thing. So yeah, could be a lot worse and actually is probably very similar to even newer cars like the 6500 XT. So yeah, happy days. But Dan said, because you said the RGB couldn't turn off. So oh, the RGB, yes, yeah, sorry, the RGB on the microphone can. No, did I say that? I didn't say it couldn't turn off on the microphone, did I? I don't know, I didn't notice I'm you not sure. that. Uh, power supply wise, EVJ 600 watt, this is the W1 I think it is, which means white one, yeah, there we go, W1 K3, loads of power, more than enough power for what we're doing here, not very few, uh, energy efficient, but the difference between a white, a bronze, and uh, all those other things is pretty minimal anyway, so yeah, it's uh, not going to be the end of the world, so let's get this all put back, put together, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm slightly concerned now, in hindsight, about um, <clears throat> if the power supply is going to physically fit. I'm kind of concerned it won't. Oh, actually, I didn't mention. Men well, I did not mention uh, M.2 drive. So we will probably be using uh, either the Western Digital Blue. What did I start putting on there last time? Actually, no, I won't. I'll, use my, I'll be using the Kioxia. Reason being is because the installation for this is actually on that drive already. So that's going to make testing a lot easier when it comes to it a little bit later on in the week. Which uh, is a bank holiday this week. If For those of you outside of the United Kingdom who, who were not aware, there is actually a uh, August bank holiday on Monday. So for some lucky people, they will not be having to uh, troll themselves into work. Which is good. Oh, it's George's first bank holiday off, isn't it? Since he started working. Yeah. So I'm going to stick the RAM in first of all, get that out of the way. So we'll start with RAM slot two. Move it up a bit, Bob. There we go. Uh, when you're doing RAM, never use the first slot. Always use the second slot if you've only got one stick. If you've got two sticks, use the second and the last slots. A lot of people actually, when they're building a PC, fall for this trick where they either put it in the first slot or the last slot and they don't read the manual and then they come onto the Discord saying, I've got, I built a new PC which has cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds and it doesn't bloody boot up. So, okay. Push it up a bit more because it's not central, it's annoying. Uh, sorry, there we go. Oh, I've forgotten where I put it. So, anyway, M.2 time. So we're going to put in our little Kioxia droid. This is the Kioxia Xeria G2. PCIe. With M uh, Dutch Jan, PCI. Um, well, if you're going for an SSD, it's cheaper if you haven't got an M.2 slot. If you need a PCIe card with an M.2 to get M.2, it's probably not really worth it. You probably. Most people don't notice the difference between an M.2 and a uh, SSD in general, normal terms anyway. It's only if you're doing benchmarks that most people will ever notice it. Or maybe if you're doing specific tasks like video editing, something along those lines. Mick Wood says, work, I've been retired for 11 years. 
Well, good for you. <laughs> I would quite like to be retired. I've been retarded for 11 years, some would say. Right, processor. Let's get this in here. Uh, Aspi Antics says UK mate, Royal Mail, Amazon, etc. There's rail strikes again and health wife workers going on strike. Everybody's gone on strike. Striking is the new thing. I was going to say something then, but I won't because I'll probably get kicked off of YouTube for it. But yeah, striking is the latest uh, bandwagon, isn't it? Which I don't think people realise that the more strikes that go on, the worse the recession and inflation will get. Not allowed to mention that we're Oh yeah, not allowed to say inflation in the UK, sorry. It doesn't exist. So, yes. There we go. There's the processor in. That was nice and easy. So you just lift up the arm, fully extended, pop your processor in. Stick a little bit of uh, thermal goop on if you haven't got some pre-applied to your cooler. Just gonna do a little mark it with an X. That'll do. And oh, we could do with a cooler. We really could. So we're just going to use the stock cooler in this, as that is what I was using in the last one. I think that's going to give a, uh, a fair representation. Uh, where's my screwdriver? There we go. I was going to do something actually humorous tonight, believe it or not. I, I ham, I ham, I have that ability to do something humorous. I was going to use my Mike's unboxing screwdriver to see if I could do the entire build with Mike's unboxing screwdriver. And for the thumbnail, it was going to be, do I really need a $85 Linus Tech Tip screwdriver to build a PC? But I thought, no, that's a little bit unfair. I shouldn't do that. But I've just said it now, so I've kind of done it. Who's, who's putting their name down for a $75 or $85 Linus Tech Tip screwdriver? Kath's put her hand up. I know, she's itching her armpit. <laughs> Oh, I thought we had a, I thought we had a bitter then. No, that's a bit late. Sorry. Ugh. Will Bill, does the Linus screwdriver come with a warranty? That is a very, very good question. I actually don't know the answer to that's that. Gamers Nexus. Yeah, Gamers Nexus will probably know. The things we go through. The tech space is worse than a bloody school playground. It really is. One of the big tool reviewers is putting LTT's driver through its paces. I heard, yeah. Um, <coughs> was it f like working from home or working from a farm or farmyard tools or something along those lines? Is the people that are doing it, I think. I think I recall hearing. David Arndell says I use a five dollar screwdriver set from a hardware store. That's me. I I use that mostly, only because it's on the wall and it's handy. Because I I, I, I pack away all my tools and bits and pieces. Unless they're magnetic. It's my main tool. Cast main tool was a nail file. Straight it's amazing actually what you can get done with that. Straightening pins on a CPU. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do one screw first on one side. I'm going to do one screw on the other. Let's get that started. Is that started? Yes. Nope. I lied. That's started. Good. When are you going to wear tech Jesus hair and beard? Um, probably never. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, David Andrell says here in Australia, one year warranty is mandatory. This is just spinning forever. The letter's main tool is a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> letter's main tool is a Glock. I like that. That's good. I would have thought you would have been more of a Walther person than a Glock. Go. 
go. So that is the CPU cooler in. Make sure that's spin. I think this is one of the versions of the CPU cooler, which actually um, it's the one with the seven blades. I think the seven blade model is the one which is a little bit noisy. There is a five blade version, I think, as well, which is the more kind of cooler mastery type thing. Moving on, um, so that's it. We're pretty much we're good. We're good on this side of things. Oh, what's that in there? Yeah, that is the uh, the processor warranty thing, whatever. Windows ninety five on disk. Windows ninety five. I miss Windows ninety five. You missed that old container full of your discs all in order. I did. I used to have and a little, you it. one of those little floppy drive <laughs> containers, you know, with you had two sides, little dividers in there, so you could have your colour coded discs with various things on them. And, and it had that smoky acrylic lid on it. Mm -mm. And when you dropped it. And I dropped it and it all went everywhere. And it's like, mother. That's just not, not um, something I ever wanted to do. Um, Right, let's move that to one side. I don't think we need anything else from here. We don't need any Wi-Fi antennas or aerials. Uh, Adam Drake says, how much hair did you have when Windows 95 came out? Um, all of it. Probably too much of it, to be honest with you. And um, actually a quite considerable goatee as well. Goatee? A goatee. Ah, those were the days, eh? They were. Uh, I don't know why I'm putting that away because I'm going to need that any second to gain it over my yeah. putting the thing in. God, blimey. That sun today was I actually a bit of sunstroke, I think. Uh, Kenny Lee says, now I really want to see a pic of Mike with hair. There is some on Discord. There is, if you're going on Discord, there's actually plenty of pictures of me with hair. Um, let me see if I can find one on my desktop yeah actually I can find one on my desktop bear with me this is going to be very uh, uninteresting although you're probably very used to that by now so let's uh, let's, let's not um, bog ourselves down with detail I will try and find a picture Synology photos <coughs> bloody mouse gone now there it is Noting that multiple desktops are great when you're used to them but i'm definitely not uh folder view no i don't want folder view thumbnail no sort where's photos head hair bum hair <laughs> yeah all of the above uh people there we go uh, i do ask church. you don't i you combed your bum <laughs> I have to scroll down through now and find um, that would have been mid 90s so let's uh, maximize that I don't think there's anything there that I need to actually can I full screen that uh, how do I full screen that on here I don't think I can. Can I hide the address bar, possibly? How do I hide the address bar? <laughs> oh, F11, wasn't it? Hey, there we go. Uh, that mice is annoying. Tell me about it. There we go. So, if I do desktop, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, and you can probably still see. So, there's me with hair. When I was a youngster. Is that back on now? Yeah, that's back on. There you go. So that was uh, that's what I uh, I was like. Mr. Bean. <laughs> Mr. Bean. <laughs> Your face. Cheeky bastards. You were a dad by then, weren't you? I was. We lived. Yeah, you think you're fourteen. 
There we go. There's uh, there's me and little angel, and you can see there the hair is starting to go. Bless my heart. Those are hard days, hard times. You look right dodgy. <laughs> I look right so dodgy. Are you saying that? Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can see any of our older ones. No, it's not really. I am digressing, but. Crime watch. <laughs> That's very hurtful. Very, very hurtful. Uh, I think there's quite a few pictures missing actually from there. But I haven't transferred over. Where is your mini? What does that mean? Like car? Oh, uh, because Mr. Bean. Very good. <laughs> there we go. There's me getting ready to go to work. Having some coffee. What's that? Coffee, mate? Yeah, you were making a coffee. That's why I took that photo because you never oh, yeah. made coffee. You I, never made a drink. I never made drinks, so Kath took a picture of that. To prove that he did. To prove Once. that it actually does happen. <laughs> right, there we go. I'm uh, I've digressed enough now. Indulged in my own pitifulness. So there we go. KD says you look so different. Crime watch. Uh, Matthew Day says I'm thin on top. Bless you. Oh, is that? Have I knackered the stream up? No, it's still working. You look a lot better now. Oh, thank you, Wild Bill. Thank you, Wild Bill. I said that for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aletta says, just scream Stranger Danger. Hey! <laughs> uh, Dutch Jan says, that looks like a 50 year old photo to me. <laughs> you hurtful bastards. Like an extra out of the field. Like an extra out of crime watch. Right. Let's get on with this. Looks like public service warning from Cox. Do not approach this person. Yeah. <laughs> fit, fit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's evil. Evil. <laughs> right. I don't know whether to take that fan out already. Tell me, Bob. I think I'm going to take the fan out. Oh, yeah. 69 people watching, Bob. Nice. Every time I see 69. Uh, the older dude says, You're still a bit younger than I am, don't feel bad. Oh, I do. Everything is uh, everything's stopping working and breaking. I think you get to that, you get to certain age points in your life where stuff just starts going wrong. Like dropping screws. And you go through those stages, don't you? Like your metabolism when you're about 21 to 25, I think, stops quite drastically. So if you're not uh, if you're not relatively healthy, then you're gonna be uh, buggered, really. I think that's a myth. I think it's just that when you get to that age, you just eat junk. I think yeah, probably is yeah. That age. Ooh, there's the screws, bag of screws. Right, let's see what. Um, actually, let's put the rear I/O shield in. Let's get that started off with. Oh, there we go. Someone's done a some sort of meme thing with one of the pictures. I can tell already. It's too rare. Who's that? Dave or Bob? Bob. Uggs. Dear Lord. Lorks are lordy. David Andrew says you're all younger than me and I am 68 in November. Well, congratulations on making it to 68. Let's hope you have many, many more. I always said I was going to be, uh, I wouldn't make it to 40. So, not doing too bad so far. Bloody warm in here. I wish the, I wish the summer area would just go. No, I don't want the sunflower to go. Mind you, saying that even in the winter it's hot in here. Right, so what screws do I need? Um, what's the bet if I take the fine threaded ones? It's going to be the coarse threaded ones. Well. The fine threaded ones do appear to work fine. So I'm going to try a coarse one just to be on the safe side. Because sometimes they'll both work. And then that 
don't want to work. No. So it's definitely the finer threaded screws, which under normal circumstances are actually quite easy to find. But under this light and with the shadow of a bloody microphone, not quite so easy. It's not the microphone, it's your hand. It's the shadow of my hand as well. Yeah, I need an overhead light. I need just lights everywhere. Why don't you get your glasses? Because that won't help me see. If I put my... I... Yeah, no, but we can think of Alan Carr then. <laughs> you have to mess your teeth up If I put my glasses on, I will be able to see some things. But not many. Because they were a prescription about ten years ago. Uh, how many is that? Four, eight. So one more, there we go, number nine. And are there pillars in the right places already? No, there's not, so we're gonna to have to install a pillar, which luckily I have a special screwdriver for, which doesn't appear to be in the damn position. Where the hell's that gone? A bit behind your ear. Call the police, where has it gone? It's normally living in here. It's behind your ear. It's not behind my ear at all, because it's too big, it's like that long. <laughs> what have I done with that? I love that screwdriver. I bet you gave it away with that case. I didn't. Incredible. How am I going to tighten that up now? Oh my god. I'm going to have to get some actual other tools out. Uh, there's £2.20 from Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> there we go. Hey, have some of those as well. Rick H says, if it wasn't for my knees, I'd feel 20. Hopefully, I'll get my knees replaced soon. If my throat was nicer, I'd feel a bit younger, but my throat is ruined. Probably some fall by in. At some point in my life. Did you say Rick H said that? Uh, yeah. That was a letter said that. What, about her knees? Yeah. Was it? Oh, it was Rick H. No, she said it to Rick Gage. Ah, sorry, my apologies. Why don't we get a knife out? Things aren't that bad. <laughs> Let's find a screwdriver set which actually has one of these things in it. No, that one hasn't. Ah, what about my, uh... Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stop sending me money, please? I'm trying to find some stuff. <laughs> O'Reilly sent... Um, Thank you, O'Reilly. Get, get a new screwdriver. I can't even find my screwdrivers, let me buy them. I think I'll find them now. Uh, well, this is another set which... I think this is what young Boba Dobolos sent me. And that has got a 5.5mm, I think, somewhere. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> what a child. The RGB is strong with this one. It is. Is it the fake I fix it set? It is the fake I fix it set. I break it set, this is. Um, O'Reilly's broken it. O'Reilly's broken my bloody thing. Hey Google. No, because you turn it all off. Hey Google, turn off plug one. You'd be lucky I turned it off. Miserable. At least I still got RGB next to me. <coughs> right, which one's 5.5 mil? I have no idea. I don't expect regular humans to read that, even bloody Superman. I could read it. The Is that the one you bloody. That one I just pulled out. No. Is that the one that you knocked everything out of when I had to put it all back? <laughs> no, that was the other one. The blue one. <laughs> I don't... There was one that uh, I bought very cheaply from uh, Amazon and all the bits dropped out. Because you knocked it off the table. There we go, the, uh, the, I almost fix it. To be fair, actually, that's actually really nice, the mechanism on that. See it spinning? You probably can. But it continues rotating after with momentum. Actually, you can see it there, look. I can demonstrate better with some, y fix it kit. The Y fix it kit, yeah. That's Glenn. See it still spinning? It's almost like there's a proper bearing in the top of there. <gasps> you 
make David Underhill's Google try and turn off their device. Sorry. Sorry about that, dude. Right. Before we put this away, is there any other things I need to screw? Just leave it in front of you. I'll leave it there. You never know. You it might come it. in handy. <sighs> right. Uh, what should I put in here next? Should I put in the motherboard? Yeah. I've got plenty of room for the power supply. Let's try that. Right. These little ducklings need to go in next. Why did I take that fan at the back? Remind me again. Right by the microphone. Lovely. Right, let's pop that down over by there, as they say in Wales. And is that lined up almost? Yep. Oh, I've left that bloody thing on there again, haven't I? There we go. Okie dokie. This is actually quite nice because there's plenty of room in here. So when you put the motherboard in, try and aim to get your I.O. ports kind of down. So kind of swoop, swoop down. Making sure that you've got all of your motherboard pillars correctly. And that's lined up. Some motherboards are going to have extra pillars or a pillar with... Uh, like a little noggin on it to centralise your board, but if it hasn't, don't worry. It's all good. Oh, noggin was ahead. Yeah. Right, why is that not tightening up? Because right, they're not in the right position. There we go, back a little. So we'll get that one in. Not tighten up all the way, just nearly all the way. Uh, this does seem overly dark. I need to work out some of the lighting. I think it's because this camera is basically using the uh, the world's worst kit lens. So why don't you get that torch? Magnetized into it. I think it's because it's got a bit of a a bit of a what's it called? Um, oh God, the. Um, yeah. oh. I think it gives off a bit too much of a flicker. I don't know if I can see it. Oh, actually, no, that's not too bad. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Overly dark, you say, says Bob. Let there be light. RGB light. You've got to turn your light off now. I'm not turning my light off. If I turn that light off, I see a thing. Hey, is it bloody hot in here? I can't believe I, I feel like it's really hot tonight. Do you want the window open? Don't know. Do I want the window open properly? So this is because I've been in the sun all day. This is the heat radiating. radiating off, yeah. Oh, sorry, Dades. Sorry, Baba. Oh, I off the windowsill. Oh, mm, dear. Sorry, baby. Come on. Whew. Last screw. Mike's unboxing reviews and PC building into the dark. Daisy. Hello, Daisy. Hello. Poor old Daisy. She's the eldest cat. And she is what? 15? 14. 14 years old. Uh, James says, love you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, very informative and really genuine with this, which in this mad world is refreshing. Thanks to this channel this year, I managed to build and sell 12 PCs. Oh, that's awesome. Love it. 
Uh, Tech Daniel Tess Testar says, Mike, good thing you're building computers so I don't have to lying on the couch because of COVID. Sorry to hear that. Uh, we managed until now. My daughter is 20 days old and in bed with her mother who is not yet sick. Oh, bless. Well, hopefully you're all, uh, you all, well, yeah, you know, get through it. Any type of illness is a, a shitty thing to have, especially when you've uh, got a newborn. Then, yeah, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. I was going to try and say something humorous, but in times like that, really, there's no point. If your kid's only 20 days old, you've probably got lots of other things going around your head already. And if it's your first one, then you're probably, uh, well, if, ask me, to be honest with you, if it's your first one, you're probably glad you're not very well, just so you can get away and get some rest. <laughs> <laughs> Every cloud. But yeah, that's uh ooh. Mike had me staying up all night. I'm not sure if they can actually even hear you, you know. Can you actually hear Kath when she's talking? Can someone let me know in the chat? Because I don't know. So you had me up all night decorating the hallways <laughs> and George was less than a week old. <laughs> cool, those are stiff. Didn't you? Yes, I did. Oh, they can hear her. Excellent. Yeah, Kaf, uh, when we when we had our first George, the, um, yeah, we just, well, I decided it would be a good idea to decorate the house, basically, the day before, day or a couple of days before he arrived, and sand down multiple sets of stairs in a flat, which was like a three-story flat, or a maisonette-type deal. In hindsight, that was probably not the best move ever. I've kind of done this in the wrong order, actually, putting the graphics card in now. Normally, people would leave the graphics card to the end, but can't be arsed. It's a bank holiday weekend. I'll do what I like. And actually, you tell I won't, because I will be uh, going to work tomorrow. Hey, Tank Daniel, I am 44 years old and I feel like an old man. You will. That is, that's, you're 44, you're an old man. <laughs> it's just, that's, that's what it is. Uh, how will I feel when my daughter finishes school? It's such a big difference when I had my first son 16 years ago. I can, I can feel for you. I can feel for you, definitely, because uh, we, I think I was 25. 24. 24? Yeah, George. I couldn't have been. Why? Because he was born in 99. And I was born in 74. So but mine, he was mine would be eight. your birthday. He was born in. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it was, yeah. So it was, yeah. So it was the year. It was the beginning of my 25th year. Yeah. Before you were 25. Anyway, yeah, so I was 25 when we had George and. Then it seemed like, well, I was still a kid. When you're a kid and you're having a kid, it's like, oh my shit, what the hell is going on? Well, they're saying that. I think I was relatively mature anyway, apart from smoking way, way, way too much weed. But I didn't do anything else other than that. So I was uh, relatively, I was a homeboy. Just stayed at home all day, or night rather. Went to work during the day, smoked weed at night. But we were trying for four years, so you could have been a lot younger. Yeah. That's true. That is true. If it wouldn't have been for my useless sperms, George would have come out a lot earlier, I think. But they weren't very good they were, swimmers. They were too laid back on the <laughs> They were too chilled. It's like, no, we'll just stay out here by the flaps. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> too far? Too far? Yeah, far probably is. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> Bob's probably just spat his drink out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just hang out at the dam. <laughs> where's, my, where, where's my magnetic screwdriver? Th no, not the magnetic screw. Where's my magnetic torch thing gone? I don't know. Have you turned it off? Yeah, that's why I can't find it. Otherwise, I just look for the bright bit. Uh, why did you turn it off? Because <laughs> I wanted to conserve batteries, even though it is rechargeable. Take it to work to recharge it. That was a rookie error, wasn't it? 
hindsight. Um, where are the... Oh, there it is. It's magnetic, so I stick it to anything that's metal. That's why you look so old. Thank you, Jan. Appreciate that. <laughs> no, our letter says the tadpoles were waiting for a pizza. They probably were. They're like, dude. No, I shouldn't. No, I can't even say that. Can I? Probably get kicked off YouTube. I wanted to make this stream 18 plus, but then it said you can't monetize it. So it's like, well, f that. <laughs> I lose out enough as it is. So those bastards taxing the shit out of me. Got to get something out of it. Right. Um, I suppose really. Oof. <laughs> it's gonna have to be power supply, but I don't know if I'm gonna get the cables in. After, I think I probably will do. But do I do them first anyway? Where's the USB Type Three? Gosh darn it. It's on that side, so that's all good in hood. I can run that through there. Into the back of there. Actually. Hmm. That sucks. Okay. Okay. That could work. There's not actually a great deal to wire up here, so let's just wing it and try the power supply and see if it actually physically fits. Nowhere to store the USB cable. Right, this I think is going to be uh, entertaining, possibly. Because I don't see how in God's green earth that's going to fit in there. Because there's just way too much cable going on there. Although, might be alright. I couldn't speak from experience, but I will take your word for it. It's cold down in the south. Hey Daisy. Hello. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, Bob. so much <laughs> child absolute child well if it's any consolation there's probably at least one other person that is as well of our concurrent viewers which are currently at 69 I smell burning you smell burning oh yeah That microphone actually does smell like it's burning, to be fair. It might just be radiating off your hair. It probably is steep. I want to go to wash my hair tonight before I go to bed. Came your ass. Came my ass again. Um, again. <laughs> yeah. the, um, the steam coming off my face is going to be immense. Uh... That parasol went in quite easy. I'm quite impressed. I hate this parasol. Madeline Levy says it's 4.30 in the morning. And um, where, yeah, where is that? That must got to be... Australia? Mm, yeah, it could be New Zealand, possibly. Uh, Danielle, is this one of those cases where you have to have extra slack in the cables going to the front in order to remove the front panel later? Yes, definitely. I think that would be uh, very much... A good idea. How does Ugly Bob know all the time zones? Because his daughter lives over there, or his son, doesn't he? Son. East Coast of Ooh. Australia. I wouldn't. East Coast of Australia, so, so that's hang on. That side, Never yeah. eat, so that no, is going to. I'm trying to think what is on the east coast of Australia. What is there? That is. Melbourne's. Is that Melbourne? 
Is that that side, east coast? I, I suck at most geography. <laughs> Brisbane and Sydney. Uh, he is completely wrong. He is opposites. West coast. Bob. You've let us down. More importantly, you've let them down. Whoever Brisbane, that is. Brisbane and Sydney. Brisbane. 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 That's where we wanted to go, wasn't it? By New South Wales. Our letter Wales. is at 4.30. Yeah, we wanted to get to New South Wales. But then we th heard that someone said it's actually like South Wales in the UK. So we decided <laughs> against it. <laughs> fool. Silly fool. Right. Actually, I should turn this around so you can see what I'm actually doing. That would be probably beneficial to the stream. Um, I'm going to poke these in here. Peel one of the bejesus out of this. This is actually going to be really, really tidy. Which is always a bad sign. If a PC is really, really tidy, it means it's not doing a lot. I think Bob's going to take us there for three months next year. Bob's going to take us there for three months? Well, he didn't actually say that. He said he'd be there. <laughs> He'll be there, yeah. It'd be like Michael Jackson, I'll be there. Uh, let's go under there. Feb to April, so that's their summer, isn't it? It's at the end of their summer. Oh, that cable went through nicely. Uh, yeah, it must be. Yeah, it must be their winter now, mustn't it? Or coming it must spring? Be coming up to their spring, mustn't it? At what seasons that Uggs? I don't know seasons. What weather is that? <laughs> what weather is that? It's a slightly less windy weather. Oh, where's my... Is it AMD or Intel? It is very much AMD. And. That's an oxymoron, isn't it? Uh, It'll be the middle end of their summer. <laughs> the middle end of their summer. That's like the Welsh thing, isn't it? See those two houses? Mine's the one in the middle. Got it in for the Welsh tonight. Look at that. That's how tidy is that down there, under down by there. Hopefully you can see all that. That is one clean looking build. Really, truly is. I'm actually surprised myself. Damn it. I don't get that sentence. It'll be very hot and very moist. But enough of me shorts. <laughs> It'll be hot and moist and in Bob's shorts is what he's trying to say. Uh, Jesus, calf. I get it. <laughs> but why is he coming from Dubai? Because he's going there first. Why is he going from Dubai? Yeah. I don't know. Grab some gold bars, I don't know. Tidy is that down there, Mike? It's blood. It's like it's been manscaped. That is ridiculously tidy. That's everything connected now. Can you actually see that? A letter says, "Too clean needs a defoe pump and a mile of tube in." It probably does. That. too keen on the white stripes yeah the white stripes are a little bit of a, Where are the white a thing on, on the motherboard there's a few white, white stripes now actually I haven't put the um, the cooling fan back in so I should do that it has got a Molex on there so clearly the first thing we're going to need to do is to uh, check that no I don't think so no it's in that top Oh, what, the little uh, torch? That is a ring. I'm not even sure what the model number of this is, actually. If it's that tidy, it'll never boot first time. Uh, I'm not sure what model this is. It's basically a ring torch, but it's actually really good because you've got the nice torch there, which has got the adjustable pinpoint spotlight doodah. Or wide. Nice, it's in my eyes. And it's also got the... Uh, 
thing. And being magnetic, it's quite handy because you can just stick it somewhere when you're actually working on stuff. Although I would have liked the magnet to be a little stronger. Hey, there we go. Who needs RGB when we've got a ring torch? Pretty good. Black hole of death. Hope there's no input on that case. Not a problem. I'm going to put this fan on. I'm pretty sure this fan, from what I can recall when I plugged it in on a... Um, eh? Is that an O-line? Um, I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. I got it from work. It's cheap. I think it was cheap by mistake. My boss is a tight bastard. Right, I'm going to plug this in. This is only a three pin, so I'm actually adjust these to do that. But I think from what I remember from when I fired this up, I'm pretty sure that even at full blast, this thing basically did nothing, which is quite common, to be honest with you, with most of these uh, pre-installed fans. They are pretty useless. But in order to test it, you do need to do it in its kind of regular configuration because this is how people are going to buy it. Uh, not having any fans at all at the front is going to be problematic, I think, to begin with. But kind of is what it is. I think it'd probably be okay. But with anything any warmer, graphics card wise or CPU wise, I think it would be uh, a disaster waiting to happen. But we'll see what it's like. There is room up front to put in three 120 mil fans, although the top one would probably be entirely blocked off because there's cabling and stuff in front of it. But I could take a bit of a Dremel to this and actually make it have a little bit more airflow at the front. But I don't think it's entirely necessary. It's not going to be as open as the black hole was. That sounds really wrong. And let's pretend that all of that in there is nice and tidy. And get the screws back in quick before I change my mind. How does air get in the front? Good question. <laughs> in theory, it gets pulled in from the vents along the side and basically the grab handle. There isn't a lot of airflow to be happening with this, to be honest with you. But it's not the end of the world. No, that comes uh, October 25th, I think it was. Right, so I need to plug this in now, don't I? So let's get my equipment set up. And actually, do I put the side panel on? No, that's tempting fate, isn't it? I'm not going to put the side panel Andy on. Andy wants to see the awfulness of RGB fans behind the half panel. <laughs> How are you going to test it without the side panel on? I'm not doing the test tonight, I just want to see how it boots up. I'm pretty sure it will. So now it's not going to work. See, that's how I've jinxed it now. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. I'll have a look in the chat in a minute while I get my bits and pieces together. Uh, Wild Bill 36's can run hot. They actually... Uh, sorry, 36's. 3600's can run hot. Yes, they, uh, they can actually. You're not wrong. This is where it's going to try and run bloody graphics card at 4K again, isn't it? Stupid machine. Black hole. Uh, it's not the black hole. Dremel, black hole, scary. <laughs> going to Dremel your black hole out. One hour in, the build is done. What is your fastest build ever done? Um, I used to do it for a living, so I've probably done one in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But then I was I was actually told off by my boss for using too many cable ties. Because I was trying to make it too tidy. It's like three cable ties, that's all you use. <laughs> okay. Whatever. And it turned out it could be done. I didn't like it, but it could be done. Should be a versatile PC game with it and bake cookies at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I suppose I should plug in a keyboard and mouse. That would be uh, Sensible. beneficial. What keyboard and mouse can I plug in? 
Decisions, decisions. Um, I'm going to need that for that, aren't I? Ordinary dude's back, yeah. Step away to dispatch a sneak in the yard again. Oh, sneaks. You fell off the jet wing again. <laughs> um, if I do... Yes, right. I'm going to unplug that one. As you no doubt heard. And plug it into this. And let's get some interweb connectivity. This works, I'll be moderately impressed. If I've selected the right drive with the uh, existing install on, I'll be even more surprised. So power on, and where is, oh, the power button's there, isn't it? There we go. Oh, I need to be on the right input, don't I? So. How's the little kitten doing? She's a year and two weeks. You see my three, are we gonna have an input? I'll pop it in this finder. No signal currently. <laughs> That's worrying. Oh. Have I plugged it in the right thing? Yes, I have. Hey, there we go. American Mega Trendies. There we go. Uh, new CPU installed. Press something else to continue. Can you can you all still hear me? Or am I still audible? Awesome, good stuff. Wild Bill says you must get one of those K7, uh, K400s, they're handy. It's like K400 keyboards. I have actually got one in the other room. I probably should get that. Uh, so what do we want to do? F1 to run setup. Let's have a look, see what the dealio is here. So currently we are at 38 degrees Celsius for the CPU temperature. Another world temperature 26 degrees. DH, DOCP is not on. Bum bang. Oh, there's Poppy. Let's have a quick look. There she is. Say hello to the people. Say hello. No, she's not having that. Right, back to there. Right, let's uh, turn on some DSOP. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Uh, time 21.43. Yeah, time's still right. That's good. And we'll turn ASUS Optimal. And let's go into Advanced Mode. AI Tweaker, look in there. Uh, ASUS Performance Enhancement enabled, clearly. I think we'll leave that as is. Performance, bias auto. Do. Oh, PBO, that's going to be on, I guess. Oh, I'll leave it as that. So, boot drive is going to be that one. Yes. Oh, resize the bar. Don't think I need it on really, but we'll do it anyway. Save changes and reset a vu. Why is. Oh, yes, yeah, right. I, I was looking at the wrong settings there. Now, this is awkward because when this fires up now, I can't see the screen unless I choose HDMI output on there. So let's see if this is working. Is it working? Doesn't appear to be at the moment. Oh, it's probably done the memory training. So let's see what happens. Anytime today. Come on, Elgato. I could do with a Gato. Said that last week. Oh. Right, I think I've killed it. Awesome. Good job, Mike. Yep, it appears I've killed it. Actually, where's the diagnostic D LEDs? I can't even see them on here. Look behind you, you see them. Oh, they're all off. So in theory, that means it's on. Still oh, by Willis. Reset. 
wired something up wrong, haven't you? Well, no, because it was on just now. Is this a better build than a Spectrum 48K, and will it play Frogger in 15 frames per second at 720? Most likely. All of those things. <laughs> Right, so we can see if it's, on, if it's working or not. If I press the power button, it should turn itself off itself without user intervention. It doesn't appear to be doing that. So maybe, AI tuner usually boots several times now. Yeah, I think because I did that AI overclock thing, I probably shouldn't have done that. But then why are all the lights off? That doesn't make any sense at all. That fan's blowing more air in than it is out. If you get close, it's got that real kind of turbulent feel to it. Is it is it dead? It's still dead. Dead. It's dead. Uh, yeah, overhead. Dead. Yeah, it's dead. Hmm. And pressing and holding the power button doesn't turn it off either. Bang! That's a, a hard <laughs> fail. Sorry, pops. Sorry, neighbours. <laughs> they take my money. The RGB works. So that was a hard, hard fail. With even the power button not working, that's bizarre. So let's see, so CPU LED, RAM, VGA, boot. And it's probably got some angry message now. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> the system posted in safe mode because Mike is a pin ass. Uh, so maybe let's not quite do some Asus optimal stuff and save and exit. Oh, did I turn on? Right. The ACP is still there. That's good. Mike, I have a question. Is an XFX660 6600 XT compatible with Asus Tough Gaming V550 Plus motherboard? Yes, it is compatible. And then another one is Mark Very Thinking about upgrading my son's RX570. Do you think 1070 Ti would be worth a look? 1660s and 1080 Ti is still quite expensive. 1070 seems budget priced. Yeah, 1070s are still a good card. I quite like a 1070 myself, to be honest with you. Since I've been the 1070, even upgrading hasn't really felt as if there's been a massive jump past that so yeah 1070 is uh, still a great little card right so this appears to be working let's have a look at the temperatures and see what the deal is there let's move it move it I can't even see what that says actually where are we CPU CPU uh, package temperature, there we go. So, 51 degrees, that isn't ideal. Mind you, it is one of the, it is a stock cooler, so... That's dropping down a bit now. Now it's finished booting. It could be worse. I don't put the side panel on there. Not quite yet. Right, I'm gonna... Where's the uh, cine wench? Do a ten minutes. That should do. And multi core. We'll let that run for a bit. And I'll put the side panel back on and we'll see how toasty bros it gets. What is the specs of your PC right now? And my PC or this PC? I put the glass panel away.
Uh, my PC, my own personal PC, is uh, Ryzen 7 5800X. Got 32 gigs of uh, V-Color Prism Pro DDR4 4266 RAM. Uh, there is a GeForce Finders Edition 2060 Ti. I've got three terabytes of storage, M.2. Uh, one terabyte is PCI Express Gen 4x4. Two terabytes is Gen 3x4. And the case is currently a um, Colink Citadel ATX, which is very, very nice. Ooh. I think that's. Have I missed anything out? Don't think so. <coughs> right, so I'm going to leave this running for about 10 minutes and see uh, how toasty it gets. Thank you for the super chat, whoever that is. Who is that? Me. Rick H. Bless you. Uh, buy yourself some Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut Thermal Paste. That is actually a very good idea. That has been something which has been on my uh, to do list for a long time, actually. I will actually do that. Thank you very much. Rick, that's very kind of you. $20 there. Bless you, sir. Uh, w O P R, is that? Whopper. Oh, Whopper, yeah, sorry. Extra RAM is great for video editing, but for gaming, 16 gigabytes is perfect. I don't know if it is. I honestly don't know if it is. I think 16 gigs, depending what games you're playing and what you're running on your system, I don't think 16 gigs is always enough. It'll get you by, but I don't think it is the sweet spot anymore. I think 32 gigs is starting to become that, especially now with multiple processors or multiple threaded processors, multiple cores, a lot of things running in the background. I don't know about you, but generally if I'm playing a game, um, well, for instance, last night I was playing some of the Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator 2020, and I had that running. I also had Epic running in the background as well, which I generally tend to anyway. Also had Discord running, and I was uploading a video to YouTube. Plus there was a couple of other Chrome tabs open. Uh, Outlook was open. What else was on? There was probably something else going on in the background. A couple of pieces of maybe RGB software, that sort of thing. And that was well over 16 gigs, which I didn't think it would be. Flight Sim 2020 does load a lot of stuff into RAM, to be fair. But I'm only playing it at 1440p. I'm not running it at 4K or anything, so... It's not like I'm loading huge amounts of textures. Um, yeah, that was way over 16 gigs of RAM. I think that's like 24 I was using. So if I had 16 gigs of RAM, I'm going to be noticing definite um, kind of judders between its streaming textures from the RAM into the main memory and the graphics card, all that kind of stuff. And if you're using um, resizable bar, you're going to notice it even more because resizable bar is effectively using a little bit of your RAM and your CPU to kind of send textures. So if that pipeline gets kind of corrupt, not corrupted, um, impacted by other system tasks, you're gonna notice uh, jittery or laggy gameplay. So yeah, 16 gigs is fine for most people if you don't mind potentially having to close down a couple of apps or putting up with a few stutters here and there. Fenvelo says FS2020 starts to chug with 16 gigs. It, it does, definitely, yeah. I can I can certainly attest to that. Again, it depends. What, if I close down all the other tasks that are running, but because um, you have to have Steam open, I think, if you've got it under Steam, but you also have to have the Microsoft Xbox Store open as well because it runs in that. So you have to have that service running on top of Steam or however you've bought it. So it, is, um, it can be problematic. Uh, really random review. So, I'm Mike and Gaff, how are you guys doing this evening? We're not doing too bad at all. I've still got a throat infection, which is driving me absolutely insane. It will go sooner or later. Uh, Riley says, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. One GB is for Star Trek online MMO game. Two GB is Chrome browser. Windows and other apps take up another 10 gig of use. Uh, Kenny D says, hoping to get 32 gigs of RAM now for uh, the prices of DDR4 RAM have come down by a lot. 
yeah, DDR4 is dropping uh, quite a lot. There's been a few deals this week, actually, where 32 gigs of DDR4, maybe 3200 speed, has been like £90, which is uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I always say that when it gets to um, 8 gigs of RAM being £25 or thereabouts, between 20 to £25, that is the kind of sweet spot that is unlikely to get much cheaper than. So if you can pick up um, 32 gigs, which is obviously 4, 8 gigs, or two 16s, um, if you can pick up anywhere between 80 to £100, it's in that kind of safe zone where it's unlikely to get considerably cheaper, which is always good. And that was the same with DDR2. Uh, less so DDR2 because RAM was different sizes then, really. It was like 1 gig, 2 gig, and 4 gig. But for DDR3, definitely, uh, the cheapest DDR3 got in 8 gigs here in the UK was about £22 for 8 gig stick and that was Germany the HyperX which was actually pretty good RAM as well so it got to a very good price point Crucial Ballistics that was also come down quite cheap as well around about £23-£24 sometimes slightly lower if you've got a really special deal but kind of averaging out somewhere between 20 and £25 for an 8 gig stick so when DDR4 gets to that you take into account kind of time's moved on and also the, uh, the I word your money is not worth as much as it was. So, yeah, uh, 20 pounds for eight gigs of RAM is pretty much that sweet spot. Uh, running around with vitamin C and magnesium. I'm doing vitamin C, but with baking soda, bicarbonate soda. Well, well that's how you mix sorbic acid up. Yeah. And magnesium. Magnesium you spray on. Yeah, magnesium will spray that, yeah. Because I make that with frankincense and myrrh in it. From myrrh. Uh, Fenvelo says DDR5 will push the price down. I don't know if it will. I don't think it will come down a great deal more than what it is now. I think a normal set of RAM now, 16, 16 gigs of non-RGB RAM, if it's less than £80, I think it's a fantastic deal. Um, if it's RGB, anything under 100 is pretty much sweet. Matthew Day says, remember when it cost that per megabyte, not per gigabyte? Yes. I can as who. That only went up to Simon Says. So. Yes. Uh, Dutch Jan, 16 gig Patriot Viper 4 Blackout DDR4 3200 DIM CL16 dual kit 55 euros. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, Dom says, uh, is already that now, DDR4-3200 is 18 quid for 8 gig, it's CAX, second hand. Uh, just problem is you don't know if it'll be the same brand. Yeah, that is always a bit of a crapshoot with them, sadly. But good price though, £18 for 8 gigs. Can't go too far wrong there, second hand. That's some mad deals on RAM. Um, what do I have? I'm pretty sure at one point I bought 32 gigs of RAM... For s no, I'm sure we're at like fifteen pounds a stick or something, or thirty fifteen pounds per. Yeah, it was thirty pounds per sixteen gigs, which was insane. And that was like three years ago. Uh, William Bowley says in five to six years DDR4 will cost a lot when people do retro PC builds. <laughs> yeah, let's try. Yeah, stock up on it now and keep it somewhere in the loft. Keep it somewhere safe. Buy a processor and a motherboard and just don't open it. Leave it completely factory sealed. And then in 10, 15 years time you'll sell it on eBay for probably the equivalent of a thousand pounds. Right, let's see how our render is getting on. Still running. And I didn't have a look at the temperature actually. Temperature Rio. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh dear. 86.6 currently. It's peaked at 86.9. Um, not sure. It doesn't appear to be throttling at the moment. We're at 100% utilization. So, hmm. 
Not bad, not bad. So we'll see how far that goes. Um, it might get to 90, I don't think it will. Stock cooler though, in this case, with the world's worst fan. And no side panels. No, oh, no I've got the side panel on now. Oh yeah. I missed that. I was getting boppy then. <laughs> yeah. Let's just turn it around just in case of reflective porn. Um, and what's the temperature in here? It is currently 27 degrees in here, so it's actually pretty bloody warm anyway. In fact, that might be blowing hot air at the temperature sensor. So I'm going to put it over here, so some more, more Who's accurate it temperature. Really? You might be able to get, be able to read it. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be in focus, is it? It's out of the focal plane. Right. Um, Matthew Day says, I'm sorely tempted to jump from DDR3 to DDR4 just as DDR5 begins. Um, to be honest, if you don't need to, I wouldn't bother. It's one of those things that it's probably not going to bring you anything major. Well, it will be a platform jump is always a bit of a bump. But depends what you're doing, what games you're playing. Generally, if your games are running fine on a DDR3-based system, they're going to run absolutely fine on a DDR4 system. You probably won't notice that much difference. I don't know. This microphone smells like it's burning, I swear. It's got that sort of... It's not getting hot, I don't think. Oh. Oh, as they say in Wales. Sorry, Welsh are getting a hard time tonight. Um, this microphone has a weird thing built in called game mode. So I'm going to try this now. You can hear what it's like. Basically, it just cuts the noise fl floor. Patrick's just popped in, sorry. It does some really weird stuff. Hello, Patrick. So, I need something that I can make noise with, so let's see. You can hear that. So, let's see what it's like in game mode. So, now this is in game mode, apparently. So, you'll probably find that my voice is breaking up or popping in and out. So, let's do the same thing again. Tap the desk. La, 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 la. I don't know if that's going to make any difference whatsoever. It probably sounds absolutely awful. I did the video review it just and I edited it. And when I edited it back, I heard it when it was in this mode. And I was like, I actually have to use my lav mic audio because the audio sucks so bad. So let's put it back into uh, podcast mode. And Lucky Pops, the game mode is terrible. <laughs> I said that in the review. I actually put it on the screen saying game mode is pointless. They did actually get to the point. John right? Sullivan asked if it was game mode. It might be. Um, that was bad, yes. They actually took it off of their website that it had that facility, but it was still on the box. And I saw somebody else review it, and they used it. And I was like, well, theirs sounded okay. So I don't know what they did to theirs. Whether or not it was real or not, I don't know. It didn't sound it. It didn't sound like mine sounded. So, yeah. I'm kind of glad they've taken it off of the box and the listings, but, yeah. It's, it's not great, is it? Uh, Thomas says, Mike, what is the mic? It is... This. Streamplify mic with uh, shock mount and boom and pop filter, etc. It's actually a nice little kit. It's about 60 quid at the moment. And the mic, I think, actually sounds quite nice. I'm not sure how you're hearing it and what YouTube is doing in terms of streaming, whether or not it's kind of compressing the audio a little bit as well, but I think it actually sounds quite nice. And compared with my lav mic, which I generally use, I think it sounds right. And it shouldn't really be... I can hear there's echo in this room, but I don't think it actually is coming through from the microphone. I think the microphone is doing actually a pretty good job of rejecting that echo from the uh, the back of the microphone. Cheers to Ordinary Dudes. Enjoy your day's work, if you can. Uh, Fran Velo says, sounds good. Uh, 
O'Reilly says, hmm, hearing Mike sniffing the mic feels rather intimate. Uh, not sure the lip sync is 100%. That is very likely. That is something which has always plagued YouTube streaming. If you stream for long enough, eventually the audio will get out of sync. And there's actually a thing in OBS where you can adjust the audio so it's fractionally ahead or fractionally behind. Uh, it doesn't help as well that I'm streaming at 30 frames per second, but the actual cameras are um, recording or capturing at 29.97 frames per second. So there is definitely going to be a very, very slight delay between the two. Actually, yeah, I can see it a little bit now. Because you're getting the audio probably before the picture, I would have thought. Let's have a look, actually. I think I can adjust that. Uh, where are we? Microphone. Where is it? Tick Hiker says you need to stay on for another hour. Now I'm finally home from work. Oh, okay. Uh, where is it? Tell us so long since I've used a USB microphone. USB microphone. Use device time stamps. Okay, I'll leave it then. We need a clapper board. Where is it? <laughs> you can tell the last time I used this because it's still got the date on it. Uh, English. Is it February 21? Yeah. Sorry, headphone users. <laughs> I'm a horrible bastard. Uh, Andre says, most people wouldn't notice that if you didn't mention it. Uh, Alessa says, sync is fine here too. <laughs> right, let's see if this thing's finished. It appears so, and what score do we get? Uh, what's that, 8657? So that's actually about right. It normally scores roughly the same as the Horizon 7 1700X. And what was our maximum temperature? We could bloody see, package temperature. So 86.9, and currently it's at 38.8, or 38.6. So that's actually not too bad for Eiglin at the moment, 30, 36, anything under 40 I would take as a win. VRM temps. Uh, VRM temps are going to be at the top. Oh, I'm using the wrong mouse. I wonder why I wasn't scrolling. <laughs> you keep trying. Yeah, uh, VRM temps, so we got up to uh, 67 degrees on the VRMs. So that's uh, temp in 8 and temp at aux 5 I think it is. Was it Aux four? No, Aux two on here. Sorry. And one of them actually got to ninety. Although saying that, no, that can't be right because it wouldn't be ninety now. I think temp in four is reading correctly. Ninety one C. Because that is not. Um, well, if the system's idling, it isn't going to be idling at ninety one degrees Celsius. So that is getting an incorrect reading from somewhere. Actually, 81C for Orcs in. I wonder where that is coming from then. Probably that burning plastic. Yeah. Right, have we got a fan? Oh, did you lend your moment? Because we could put a fan on it and see if it actually changes. It is change is it changing? Ninety one. Yeah, I would say that's reading incorrectly. Because there's no load on it at all at the moment. So you wouldn't get ninety one degrees on a component that isn't under any load. So actually someone do a quick Google, have a look what aux tin zero is and uh temp in four. Because both of those are the same on here. I can see how bobs on that already. Yeah. Have a look. See what they are. I've got no idea. That doesn't sound right to me. I don't think the VRM should be reading that. I should have used hardware info. But I didn't have it on there. 
Uh, Nick Byron says low score. It's not too bad. I normally get about 9,000. If that same processor... Actually, tell I know that processor was one which didn't do particularly well anyway. It used to be in my streaming rig, but I replaced... I bought another 3600. That went in the streaming rig and actually performed better. So that was my old processor, which... Uh, never really did very well at all. I think I always struggled to get it anywhere over 8,500 and to get 9,000 was kind of a rarity. So getting like 8, 6, 8, 7 is bang on where it should be. Uh, Nick Byron says normal over 9,000. Yeah, no, that's, normally I'd get 9,000. Well, if I run it on that one, when it's not streaming, obviously, I'll get like 9,103 or 9,04 oh, something or nine zero something so it's I just over it is a stock cooler as well to be fair thermometer probes i think isn't that the same uh thermistor probes no i don't no. sorry is that a real thing <laughs> what is it <laughs> cookies are done Yeah, there's, hardly any, there's virtually no heat coming out of the top of there at all. In fact, there's virtually... What if you suck? Let's see, that says 26.3. <coughs> so I'll put that on there for a little bit and see if it drops. If, it, if there's heat coming out of there, then What's it that? should go up. What's if the not, back it should drop. Doing? The back fan is just exhausting, but very badly. But if it was hotter when it was behind, though. That's cool as well. That feels like cool air. 26.3. Yeah, that is dropping. So it is actually pushing out cold air. Yeah, hardware info is the much better version to do. Anyway, I think... Uh, I think I kind of proved the point. It isn't necessarily a hotbox. It didn't throttle anyway. And in the stock configuration with a 3600 is absolutely fine. And I should turn it around actually so you can see what the front is like. It is on there, isn't it? Trippy lights. Unicorn puke. <coughs> okay, so I think like, that is pretty much done. Let's uh, turn this thing off now. changed nope still says that it's very strange shutting down There she blows. Well, I'm actually quite surprised that it didn't completely melt and die. I did say in the review, I believe, I think, I'm not sure because it only went out yesterday, but I recorded it about, uh, I think it's like the 5th of August or something. So the best part of a month ago. Because we're almost in September. What but does files temps tell? Oh, uh, good question. <laughs> I, I'd have to crack it open again. Uh, just checked an old photo. What's that? I used to get around. I used to get around th uh, thirty-nine fifty on your Ryzen five three six hundred. That's pretty good. That was like 
Ninety-three, not thirty-nine. Ah, yeah, <laughs> thirty-nine fifty. No, I still don't. I, still... I know ninety-three fifty. <laughs> I know. I was being facetious. You were. I know. Oh, I'll find anything. I've forgotten. I'd hidden. Right, I should pack this bit away. Yeah. Right. So, uh... Dom says, after your review of this case, I was thinking, is this the one to be yes, liked or hated? Uh, and it's not for my taste. Uh, this is the one to be. This is the one to be liked or hated. It's not for my taste. What other people think? Yeah, actually, that's a, a very good question. What do other people think? Be careful, because Bob sent it. It's his fault. So don't be. Uh, don't be. Don't be too negative about it, because Bob's in the chat, and you'll get upset. And if he's been drinking, he might start crying. We don't want to see Bob in tears. However funny that might be. Lol, Bob doesn't care. Say what you want. Fair enough. Hashtag blame Bob. Oh, someone's got in there already. Let's jam with that. <laughs> it definitely is different. It's, a, it's an unusual case in the respect that it's one of the few cases I've seen which actually has built-in uh, RGB that you can't synchronize with any other uh, systems. So it, it's just a standalone system, which I think is weird because Aerocool are one of those companies which do make a lot of RGB stuff. So you'd think it would be almost in their interests to try and develop it so that there was uh, more compatibility or at least other products from their own range that you could uh, synchronize with it, like coolers or additional fans, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was a. I find that a little bit unusual, to be honest. Uh, Twig Hiker says uh, 9813 with my 3600 on its last run. That's with a 240 IO. That's pretty good. I don't even think with my. I've got a 360 IO in there. I don't think that one gets over. Um, I'm sure it's about nine two, maybe. Somewhere well, over nine anyway. Uh, Rick H says I'll remove the glass in the front for more airflow. Uh, yeah, Fenablo says uh, one fans on airflow. Nick Barnes says son immediately said reminds me of Xbox One in black, not for me. As uh, so after watching reviews, said you have reviewed smarter case, uh, smarter better cases, including fans. Yes, that is true. That is, it is true. It's one of those things. It is a very marmite. It's a. Well, I don't think it's even marmite. It's going to be one of those things that, with a lot of things, if a case has good airflow, or has lots of fans, or something which is a value statement then it's really easy to get behind it based on the price and what it looks like. But when a case is rather unique in terms of how it looks and how it's actually built and not being aggressively cheap, then yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. I, I honestly don't know what Aerocool were kind of thinking. I know that the UK and the European and the American markets is a very, very, very different place than the uh, kind of Asian markets, where in the Asian markets, they have, I don't know, I don't want to say this, I don't know, it's, we appear to be more led by the kind of gamers nexus view of mesh and airflow and basically performance cases, whereas the the kind of Asian market generally tends to go on things like marketing, illumination, and design, like unique design or something different. So if you've got a case which has got wings popping out the side of it or something, like it will sell really well in the Asian markets, but over here it probably wouldn't see the light of day. Typical example of that is those um, cases that Steve at Gamers Nexus had. The um, those little pink cases he had with the kind of legs off the side, which is in the background of most of the shots in his videos. 
um, there is a brand name for it. I can't think what it is. Like, is it like Yetsu or Yetsin or something along those lines? Yestin, might be Yestin, but they do brands. They do like weird and wonderful designs of cases, which generally aren't particularly good for performance, but they look very unique and very different. And in their respective market, they sell like hotcakes. Whereas other companies such as maybe Colink, for example, we make really nice airflow cases generally. Um, if you're outside of the European Union, chances are you'll never even hear of it or see one. So it's a very weird, yeah, it's going to be one of those things where AeroCool do tend to, I'm not sure if it's because they are, I think they are, I'm pretty sure they're Taiwanese. So they are looking at a market, a very different kind of demographic, I guess. Uh, James Messina is a nice. Uh, says, you ever ch check that Asus ruler? Oh, Ezra board. Actually, Kath, can you do it now? Can you run uh, CPU Z on your computer yeah, and see what fast version is? Uh, just go to the start and type in CPU. What was all my tabs open? Uh, is there CPU Z on there? In CPU ID? Is there a folder for CPU ID? No. Or CPU Z? see uh, is that just the regular start menu like all apps that's just the start menu sorry I'm rubbish hashtag blame James that's <coughs> what I put on there it's where I was crashing hardware <laughs> monitor I'll have to do that later. Sorry, James. I uh, just checked Calf's computer. It hasn't got CPU Z on there, so I can't tell which uh, BIOS revision is currently on there. I'm pretty sure I updated it recently. Relatively recently. I will have to double check at some point. Uh, BB Life is with us. Says, Hi, how goes it? Yeah, good. How are you doing? Oh, try that, calf. MS Info 32. Just doing it now. Uh, Mark MC says, if this case is good or bad, I think it would depend on individual config. Wow. Uh, yes. So, is motherboard BIOS revision? Don't know. Sorry, I'm looking over at calf's computer now, and... I'm not lying, there is one, two, th there's at least three Chrome instances open. And in each one of those Chrome instances, there has got to be I counted them 35, 40 tabs. That was like 98 the other day. 98 tabs, was there? <laughs> On one. On one. <laughs> Jesus. There's um, not many today. Where are we? SM BOSS version 2.2. Oh, bar state version 3.5 right Jim uh, James yeah. <laughs> there's life Jim but as we know it um, yeah the BIOS version is 3.50 so no that is an old one I think that's from like 2019 or something stupid so it must have been I think it was actually on it was the PC from hell that I repaired recently I'm sure that had a newer BIOS I'll install it on Sunday or Monday on Calf's computer, and if it dies, she gets a new computer. I don't want a new one. I want one I've got. All right. If it dies, I'll have to repair it. No, because my tabs will be shut, <laughs> and they're all in order. Okay. I'll do a backup first. Uh, Rick H says I think she needs 120 gigs of RAM. Definitely. Uh, no, Calf's only got 16 gigs of RAM in there. And actually, that is a testimony to how good V-Color RAM actually is. I know I feel hard for them, but I think it is actually justified that uh, in CAF's PC is V-Color Prism, the first version, Prism Skywalker, I think it was called, and this uh, DDR4 3200 megahertz CL 
16, I think. Um, yeah, and that is, uh, she absolutely abuses the shit out of that ram on a daily basis with, there's two instances of edge, each one, of, nice edge, one of edge, uh, one of edge, and that's three got chrome. three chrome instances. Discord and emails, and it's all work related. And it's all work related, allegedly. That's what we tell the tax man. It is all work related. Uh, James says, do not lab test her computer on my behalf. I might have to. Uh, yeah, it's only 16 gigs of RAM in hers, and I think it's using pretty much all of it. It needs an upgrade, but she doesn't want to upgrade, so I've got the bits waiting to do it. And I would like to do it, actually, just to get rid of those bits. It's, actually, that motherboard is so old in there now that I actually had to change the BIOS battery recently. And it's very, very rare that I change a BIOS battery on a board. Unless I bought a second hand one. Uh, Wildlife Snapper, good day all. Sorry, late as always. No worries. Uh, BB Lifer says, sick of my Windows 10 not updating. You can force it to update. You can get around the um, the limitations of the TPM and all that stuff if you want to. And you don't have to do a fresh install to do it. So you can get, can get around it. James says I got 16 gigs of RAM too. Fine with it. 32 gigs would have been nice. Yes, yeah, uh, one of those things, isn't it? It's, it's always nice if you can have a little bit more RAM. The, it is helpful. Uh, PP Lightfoot says I don't want Windows 11 yet. Um, I don't know why. Windows 11, I like. I actually use it. Well, it's on my main PC. Um. It's very rare that I actually swear at Windows 11. I swear at Asus Aurora Suite, or, sorry, the Asus AI Suite. I, I made the mistake of putting my X570 motherboard back into my video editing PC, against my best judgment. Um, hashtag blame Dave for that one, for uh, saying I should get a Corsair 400, a 4000D. Of course, with Corsair comes everything which is IQ, IQ prefers Asus motherboards, so that was my reasoning behind it. Asus motherboard, fresh install, blah blah blah, start afresh. And already the Asus software is causing me issues. I'm getting the ASIO error, which I just cannot resolve. And it's something to do with AI Suite, which is the fan control software, because you can't control your fans in Armory Crate properly. It's just like ugh. Asus are having a hard time at the moment. I think in general. It's a shame because they used to make the best stuff. They really did. It was the best hardware. Justifiably so some of the prices, especially the ROG stuff. But recently, I think they've just lost the plot altogether. Uh, <laughs> AI Suite is terrible. It is. Well, AI Suite, when it works, if you install it and it works, it's, it's brilliant. I love it. It's very minimalistic for what it does. But if you have to uninstall it or remove it, then it all goes very badly. Uh, the Almighty. Uh, the Almighty. Is, I, I have a 2600X. Uh, worth it up to uh, 5600, uh, 50, 5600X. Yes, there is going to be a noticeable improvement between a 2600 and a 5600. The um, single core performance is going to be considerably better. And in general, it's going to feel more snappy. If you've got a motherboard. Um, motherboard if you've got a motherboard which supports a lot of the features like PCI Express Gen 4 um, resizable bar uh, faster M.2 drives etc you will see benefits out of it if on a slightly older motherboard you are still going to be limited limited lim limited by uh, the B450 or whatever chipset you've got so if you've got a 5 series chipset like a 550 B550 it will be better for you Hopefully that answers that question. Hey George. Oh, cheers, Wild Bill. Uh, Wildlife Snapper says Windows 11 is great. Use it on my Office PC and also risk installing it on my flight sim computer. No issues at all. Armory Crate is shite. It is it is absolutely horrendous. James likes your collar, Poppy. It is a fashionable purple collar. Pops. Oi. 
Poppy, come here. Tap your fingers. Hello. You okay? Say hello to the people. Yoga. Doing a bit of yoga before she uh, goes off. Kids, eh? <laughs> Here's a catwalk. Yeah, we should put little lan lights down the side of it. She does do a bit of yoga stretch. Do you want to come say hello? Nah. <laughs> Wildlife Snapper says she's lovely and the cat's not, not bad either. <laughs> Bless you. Actually, yes, I might have a beer. Can, I, can you grab me a beer, please, Cal? Can you get Dad a beer? <clears throat> Poppy will get it. Poppy has lovely eyes. And if you ask nicely, you can touch them. I think when cats are younger, they always look nicer than their eyes. Daisy, now she's really old, her eyes, like, they don't, they're not as, sh like, bright and sharp as they used to be, definitely. Uh, really random view says, did you see Liverpool win 9-0 today? Lol, WTF. Is that actually a thing? Is that is that for real? 9-0? Yeah. Who were they playing against? Was the, did the other team not turn up? Where is it there? Uh, left hand side, third shelf down, I think. If it's, there's any. There might not be any. I might be out of luck. Oh, against Crystal Palace. Oh yeah, that's good. Do you want some? No, it's Do you want some? Who sent that? Brewdog. Hazy Jane. Whoever sent it, thank you. That's... Oh no, actually, no, it was um, Carmen for looking at her oh, car. Oh yeah. Carmen for looking at her car. <laughs> oh, that's got a taste of... Um, Quite sharp. Hmm. Hmm. That's Thank quite you. an. It's quite an unusual taste. Have you done it all? Is this all mine? If you want. No, you have some more. But, uh, oh, it was Bournemouth, was it? Okay. Yeah, cheers, everybody. Happy bank holiday weekend, which I'm working tomorrow. Bugger. And no doubt, when it comes to Bank Holiday Monday, it'll be like, ooh, a day off. And then it'll be, ah, emails to answer, questions to answer. And actually, if we don't put a video out, actually, now it's not going to make any difference at all, is it? Because they still ask questions. Uh, Wild Bill says, if you put that beer in a glass, it'll put you right off. <laughs> it's pretty good company, I think. Shall we do it? I don't know. I can feel it going off in my throat. <laughs> uh, William Bodie says, uh, I'm going to send in September, but the DHL strike too. I'm actually not sure. I'm, well, yeah, not, I'm much not sure. Of anything coming through. At the moment, we haven't had any. Well, we haven't had anything delivered or collected for a couple of days. So. But they've cut, turned up on time on the ones we have left during the week. We did have problems with that case, didn't we, for an e buyer? Yeah, but we didn't with the other ones. Yeah, that's true. That was just that one company, wasn't it? RGB glass. We were, we were having a discussion with our neighbours every day, and uh, we were saying about things that we get sent from you guys. And I went out there with the massive tankard that uh, we got from uh, William. And that thing's so heavy. Literally, you could use it to get rid of burglars. And uh, Bob's oh, RGB you could actually fit in it, I reckon. Bob's RGB glass as well. The neighbours find it hilarious. Nick Barnes says Royal Mail on strike until uh, Tuesday. That's because bank holiday. It's bank holiday. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> that works out well actually because unfortunately, um, after last week's, actually did I. Sh did I show you guys the keyboard last week, the GK71 Sonic from MSI? I'm not sure if I did or not, or whether I made the video in the day. 
basically MSI sent me their latest uh, GK71 Sonic keyboard and it's great it's a really nice keyboard and I want to keep it and I sent them an email on Monday saying I've done the review it's ready to go back um, just need a shipping label I did say that I was going to ghost them and not send it back but I yeah my conscience got the better of me so I thought I'll, I'll offer it and uh, no reply all week up until yesterday I think it was or the day before and uh, they replied to sorry we've been at Gamescom all week sorry to not answer your email um, I'll get in touch with you on Tuesday to sort out the return it's like <laughs> bastards but anyway such is life I have to find another one of those. <coughs> uh, Tech Daniel Testar, um, seventy-three dollars for sixteen gigabytes of DDR4 with RGB is an okay price. Um, is that Canadian or US? I'm guessing it's US. Um, so, 16 gigs over here is what, 50 quid ish sometimes? 40, yeah. $73 seems a little bit much. Depends what brand it is. If it's uh, like um, Corsair or something, you might pay a little bit more. Oh, is that why Amazon have started delivering with Royal Mail? Because they knew they'd go on strike. It might be. Uh, Mark Berry says, uh, my son's school blazer hasn't arrived yet, only been waiting six weeks. Won't be here till next week due to Royal Mail Strike. Yeah. The neighbours had the same problem last year. Yeah, same happened last year. What is the... Um... I don't think it was strikes last year, but they did leave them waiting until the last minute. Uh, William Bodie, what is the name of the keyboard? It is the uh, MSI GK... Uh, sorry, the Vigor... GK seventy one Sonic, but it's the UK edition. They do an uh, American version, and they they have a UK version. I think there's going to be other regional ones out as well. I'm not sure if they are available yet. Possibly not. We had mail today, didn't we? What did we have? Today? Yeah, we had mail today. We had a stupid pen. Oh yeah. James was saying, says, Mike, did you see the Montex Sky One light cases? I like the white one a lot. Uh, 80 bucks at Micro Center. Yeah, somebody else said something about Montex. Montex stuff seems to be very expensive here. Um, I'm not sure if they're American or Taiwanese or whatever, wherever they are, but they do appear to be very expensive here in the UK. William Bodie says, damn, where can I buy it? Max is GK50. Yeah, the GK50 Elite and the GK50 Low Profile are MSI's two kind of top of the range keyboards at the moment. So the GK71 Sonic is going to be, I think it's available in America, definitely the US layout, and the UK layout is available in very, very few places here in the UK already, I think. Uh, overclockers in the UK do it. But it's really, um, it would be Germany. But for the German layout, you'll be... Um, I think Amazon did it. Hold on, I'll get the link. Kath's going to get a link for you now. Uh, 32 gigs of DDR4, 94 bucks. Brand new Patriots. That's a good price. Yeah, really random review saying that the person, the Royal Mail stuff is very random what gets delivered and what doesn't. I suppose if you go on strike, then you use what union you're in. Yeah, it depends. If they're not all necessarily in the same union. So if you're uh, Royal Mail agency staff, then there's a very strong chance you won't be in the union. So it's mostly staffers. 
And but most companies don't employ anymore. There's do they, not. So. Yeah, most companies won't employ. So the staffers are the ones that have been there for donkeys. Very rare. I think there's only been a couple of companies I've worked for as a temp where they've also been unionized as well. But it's extremely rare. I think Booker was one, wasn't it? Because wasn't it part of Asdol? Union shop and warehouse workers? Yeah, yeah it was, wasn't it? Asdol or something. Asdol, sorry, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was Asdol or... Is, yeah, the, the Union of Associated Warehouse and Shop Workers, I think it stands for. So even if you started up as a temp, you'd pay um, like a couple of, you, couple of pounds into the union to be part of the union, yeah. Uh, GGG says, uh, did I miss something or has the Black Hole case build disappeared and replaced with the player case? No, the, the Black Hole build was last week. That is the work we did last week. Maybe best not to watch that then. Don't watch it. It was awful. The the there were so many technical issues. It was horrendous. And also, <laughs> it's a bit. Oh, and um, we did talk about ass hair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, William Bailey says no. I was thinking to get one for you. No, don't do that. Um, I'll I will speak nicely of MSI. That's because you got the titles. The black hole. Oh, I didn't change the game map. I didn't change the title. I'm such a moron. Let me. Everyone kept asking that. Let me edit that. Um, I can do it. I don't think you can while it's actually live, can oh, you? Yeah, maybe not. You can actually in the control room. But can I do it here? Yeah. Oh, I know where that is because I set the original stream as being uh, over 18s only. Because I. Ah, uh, you even got the picture of it. Oh, didn't I change the pic? Because I said reuse the bloody thing. You have to do it from my computer. No, I'll just leave it so I have to. Did it change the text though? Do you want me to try? What does the text say in the top? Is it, is Use it... your tech waffle. I'm building a PC in the Game Max black hole. So it didn't reuse any of the settings then, did it? So it's actually... Yeah, it's... It reused problem. last week's settings, not the settings... Oh, <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, now it all makes sense. Uh, Lucky Man 1, thank you and uh, welcome to supporter. Bless you, sir. <laughs> Yes, William Bodhi, do not send me a GK71 Sonic. Please, please don't. Because it is a, a super expensive keyboard and the very least MSI can do is when it's finished going around doing the review cycle, I'll, I'll request it. I'll say, look, when the reviews are done, <clears throat> is it all right if I either buy it or can you send me it? So Nick Bourne says, as for confirm over 18, then that's... So it's only it's still done the... Oh. Over 18 stuff, which is why you cancelled it. Yeah. I've broken something, haven't I? The game. A lucky man's renewed his account. Hey, click tech Kev's with us. How are you doing, Kev? Kev will sort you out. Kev will sort it out. Kev doesn't have these problems. <laughs> no. Well, Kev doesn't have these problems because he doesn't really do YouTube streams. He does it with sensible things on Twitch. Kev's finally made it. Bless you, sir. Yeah, the uh, the MSI... Actually, can you grab that keyboard, Kev, please? Sorry. You haven't wrapped it up yet, have you? Yeah, I wrapped it up earlier. You I'm haven't. ready to go for Royal Mail. You bloody liar. Right. She's lying. She's lying, ladies and gents. So, uh, let us know in the comments, please, if you wouldn't mind, those of you that are still with us, what do you think of the microphone? Is this something which you can cope with and put up with? Do you want the good news or the bad news? Daisy is sitting on your ball days. I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that sounds wrong. I'm going to put this away. Clicktech Kev says, I just pretend to be a perverted old police commissioner on Twitch. How did you manage to do that? That must be a very hard thing to do. While Bill says love the mic would be my choice for sure. Not when you're mic is good. Mic is good. Thank you. The mic sounds good. The mic sounds good, Mike. So okay. 
That is. Uh, that bag as much as possible. It's alright, I've got a good mic now, I can rustle what I like. <laughs> mic is good, no worries there. Okay, that's good. So I can continue to use that. I was concerned that it would re be extremely laggy. Oh. Oh. Can't find you. There we go. Uh, Nick Barnes says, microphone, great improvement, no wires to trip over, so good choice. Well, as long as it sounds good, I don't really care about the tripping up bit. It's, does it actually sound good? good? That's good viewing. Yeah, <laughs> falling over a microphone really? is good fun. Well, this chair is now the thing. I was going to use my uh, my other chair, my, my Boulay's chair. Excuse Mike when he puts his sock back on. Sorry, he's put my sock on. Um, I don't know why he's got a sock on. Click Tech Kev says... Sound smooth. Uh, why did you have one sock on? Radio Bristol, coming in your ears. <laughs> uh, next live stream, two hours of popping bubble wrap. Uh, Dom says, if you don't, if you won't do ASMR and trickle people with headphones, then everything is okay. I will try not to do any a ASMR. Maddie, I love that. <laughs> Scratching me bold noggin. Uh, th your hair. <laughs> there is the keyboard. MSI's GK71 Sonic. With MSI's Sonic Red switches with MSI clear caps. This is good stuff. Uh, James Messina says the mic sounds better as your proximity from it decreases. Well, the mic sounds better <laughs> as your proximity from it decreases. So, that's what, so it sounds better when I get closer. So that should be best. I'm sure well, it's better. Where do you know where the speaky bit is? It's on the front with the buttons. Oh. It's actually got a mic, uh, a mic. It's actually got a mute button built in as well. So if I press it, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, BB Lightfoot says uh, sound is good. Can also hear calf. Uh, might mount it on the other side of the desk so it's more in front of you. Yeah, I was thinking I was I might actually mount it to the back of the monitor and then have that looping over. I think that would work because I actually look at that when I'm filming anyway. So I don't know whether I'll use it all the time for when I'm actually filming normal content on a daily basis, but for streaming it's actually quite handy. James says, sounds nice without the uh, tinny distance now. Professional grade, like, all good. Yeah, I think, like, if um, it's talking directly into it, Kath's smiling now. I'm not going to do something. You, you're looking at me like I'm going to do something, aren't you? No, I'm looking at you as if you love it now. <laughs> you're I don't, talking well, into it silly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking into it silly. You've got your video voice on. I chop off Borok. Um, <laughs> James Basilia says, put the wireless lav on again so we can hear you argue with the cops when you get swatted. <laughs> well, we are very fortunate in the United Kingdom that we don't have uh, SWAT as such. We have something f weirder. Um, we have, well, actually, I'm not even sure what the SWAT equivalent is in the UK. It's not the SAS, is it? Because they're not police as such. They're army. Or military, or and it just, you get whatever. Raided. Yeah, you just get raided. Just by normal <laughs> Kev says, "Do you not? Do you know who I am?" Who is she? That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Is watching Kerry Holzman get swatted. It's sad that it happened, but it's actually funny in the regard that he was so up his own butthole that he's like what right do you have to swap me 
It's like, well, we're just doing our job. If you help us and go along with what we're asking, we can verify this is a hoax call and we can get out of your hair. Whereas, no, you've got to be a dick about it. Response. Playing up to the cameras. Couldn't be like it myself. Um, actually, this is a good opportunity to let you hear what the keys are actually like. You probably can't see them, but... Very nice sound to them. I love the clunky sound. And they're a very, very light actuation force. So 35 grams of force. So if you, uh, like someone like Aletta, who likes using cherry browns, cherry browns are somewhere in the region of about 45 to 50 grams actuation. So you actually got to hit them pretty hard. And there's a, like a, a tactile bump as well in a, in a cherry brown. Huh? Is that it? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I don't want to get too attached to it. Because <laughs> I've got to send it back. Damn you, MSI UK bastards. Sorry. Uh, actually, it says on the box on the back there. So, yeah, 35 grams actuation force. The actual actuation point of the key is only 1.9 mil. So, not only is it very easy to press, you don't have to press it very hard or very far. And the total distance of travel is only 4 mil. So, it's quite a light key and doesn't have a lot of travel. I really like it. Um, so, yeah. If you find one of these available and you like your MSI stuff, the only thing you might not like is the keycaps. The keycaps are not going to be everyone's cup of tea because they're very clear. They give off an amazing amount of light. They're super, super bright. So, yeah. Anyway. They do sound extremely nice. And uh, it's not cheap. GK71 is some of the reason... I think the cheapest I found it was about... Eighty-five pounds, which is a lot of money. I would need to sell. Realistically, I'd love. I'd have to sell a couple of keyboards in order to justify getting it. Really, or if I can blag one from MSI, that would be great. But we'll see. Oh, that was good. I like that. Uh, the flying squad. Arm response. With Sweeney. Well, you're showing your age there with the Sweeney. Uh, keys sound nice. Thank you, James. They do. They do. Um, so much quieter than the one you use. Alessa says, I like the optical keys on my Razer Huntsman Elite. They're, they're actually really nice as well. The Razer Huntsman uh, keys, the optical ones, are really good. That's what Bob had on his... What was his keyboard? I think that was a Razer Elite. Uh, while Bill says, I like the Logitech G915... A lot of people say about the Logitech keyboards, I've never been a fan of Logitech mice or keyboards. And that has stemmed from... <laughs> that has stemmed from uh, many, many years ago, where back in the days, like in the early 90s, you kind of, you had your two keyboard camps. So you kind of had your Microsoft keyboard and mouse, or you had your Logitech keyboard and mouse. And there was... A quite a big divide and the two keyboards were actually very different and the mice were very different as well microsoft mice had a very tendency uh, a very much a tendency to go with a more ambidextrous or slightly right-handed whereas logitech tended to go for more angular setups um, or weird tiny like pebble shaped things so me being left-handed i did prefer the feel of a microsoft mouse especially uh something like the intelli mouse I loved the Intelli mouse. That was a great mouse. And I generally like to have matching keyboard and mouse. So something like the Microsoft Internet keyboard, um, which actually, we've actually got one upstairs, but it's a PS2 one, which Bob sent us, which I'm still waiting to find a white setup where I can use that because it's got a lovely creamy white keyboard. And it would be really good to find some setup where I can use that with to make it really look nice. I would use it on a daily basis. But... 
I would get it filthy and I don't want to ruin it because that is a collector's item. It really genuinely is. Um, is that him laughing? <laughs> Our son is funny. He's cracking up in there, laughing his ass off because Daisy is like padding on his chest I think <laughs> dear lord bless him the mommy saying hi uh, <laughs> she's coming for it now O'Reilly says I like my Logitech keyboards yeah it does seem it's like one of those things that people are still there's almost um, it seems to be in the PC world there does seem to be very much like in the world of um, football or um, soccer anything really there just seems to be a very much a tribal thing that still happens so you get people that are firmly into one camp or other so they, they're like I love AMD or I love Intel or I love NVIDIA or um, Logitech Microsoft you name it uh, Razer MSI Asus there's always people that seem to be in one particular place or another and I, I'm no different I, I quite openly say that I do like using MSI stuff. I prefer using MSI stuff where I possibly can. Mainly because from B450, B550, X570, probably not so much. But they've had a really good run with motherboards. And arguably with graphics cards as well. And they're seeming to come together with their peripherals as well. Things like, um, well, this one here. That's the GK50 keyboard. The uh, predecessor to the GK71. And mouse-wise, that's the GK30, I think it is. Or is that a 50? A Clutch GM30. Which actually isn't a brilliant mouse. But because it ties in with the whole ecosystem, it works fine. Um, I use a GK50 headset on there as well. Because it's MSI and I can get all the lights to sync. Mostly, I guess, because it's all kind of... It's my sh show PC. So it's nice to have all the lights in sync without having to change various different softwares. But it's kind of nice. The MSI ecosystem, you've got the fan control software built in. I've actually gone back on that one to the Red Dragon Center rather than the MSI Center because the Red Dragon Center supports older versions of RGB. So for things like some RAM sticks and for the GK50 headset, it doesn't work in MSI Center correctly because they've removed some of the slightly more buggy older RGB software. So that's something to definitely look out for. If you're into your RGB stuff or synchronizing, there are going to be certain brands of RGB which are going to be basically phased out. So the older, um, I think it's Patriot RGB system, that's going to be phased out. So you won't be able to download the software for that or it won't be integrated within certain things like uh, Armory Crates, MSI Center, uh, what was it, Eight, um, ASRock, what do they call their ASRocks thing? You, you know, anyway, ASRocks uh, RGB software. So, yes, that is it, really. Uh, while Bill says I only buy MSI motherboards, the X570 S boards are nice. Also, MSI GPUs. MSI GPUs are nice, but they're a bit on the pricey side for what they are. If they start to bring the prices down, I think they'll be absolute winners, and especially... The lower end ones, I guess, the Ventus cards aren't great. The fans aren't amazing on them. But some of them are actually not too bad at all, and they are getting better. Aletta uh, says, the only Logitech thing I have is my G920 steering wheel. I've got a few Logitech things, to be fair. I do use them. I've a got... cordless one in the front room. Yeah, Brilliant. my K400 Plus keyboard in the front room on the Media Center PC. Flawless. Battery lasts forever and just works. That's great. Uh, this... Remember the MK295, this works for streaming. I use it every weekend. Prior to that, I used the MK270. My Logitech webcam, the C920. I've also got the uh, K380 for the Bluetooth stuff for when I'm doing phones or uh, tablet stuff. That's up there as well. So it's not as if I haven't got any Logitech stuff. I just, in terms of their higher end stuff, especially keyboards, like the uh, 905, 915, things like that. I don't know, it just doesn't seem to, it doesn't do anything for me. And I, I was put off a lot by our son. 
because George went through the G502 Hero mouse, went through like two or three of those, and they were a lot of money, like 50 quid each at least, and didn't last a year, year and a half. And it's like, this isn't right. And then you look into it, and there's like loads of people that have problems with the G502 mouse. It's like super popular, but it's super unreliable as well. Can you remember that keyboard in the front room? Mm. And you had that hilarious letter from somebody from oh, UK yeah. Hot Deals. I wonder if they still watch. Yeah, somebody from UK Hot Deals sent us a very amusing, long, long letter um, via UK Hot Deals after I did the review of the K400+. Plus. And they were basically saying, like, the review was so rubbish that it was good. It's like you were like Greek yogurt. Yeah. The way you put your feet up on the settee and stuff. I, have a, I actually got that somewhere. I saved it and I printed it out just in case I ever lose it. It was great. Uh, William Bowley says, you've got a, he a lefty lodgy mouse for me in mub colours and don't use it. It is there, literally up there. I, I should use it, actually. It is in the uh, mub blue. Almost. I should use it. I, I think it's because this mouse and this keyboard are paired on the same receiver. And something which is a real problem for me, which is why actually I got the Logitech, uh, why I got the uh, Camlink Pro, because I've got so few USBs on that computer. And, and in fact, is that wired? that's wireless. So it's another dongle to plug in, which I've only got, at the moment, one Type-C spare, I think, on the back of that PC. Which is why, actually, I was trying to use this microphone, because it has actually USB Type-C, but the other end's Type-A. I wanted a uh, like a 5 or 10 meter USB Type-C Type-C lead, so I could run the cable around and use that port to have a free port to plug in a, another thing. Because at the moment, I can't even plug in like the other webcam without it causing problems. This was my fault as well. Actually, no, hashtag blame Dave on this one because that motherboard was in my video editing PC where I didn't need lots of USBs and the Asus board that was, no, that is in there wasn't in use and I had my MSI Gaming Plus motherboard in there which has more USBs, I think. I'm going to double check that. Actually, no, it's underneath my laptop, I think. I'm sure the MSI B550 Gaming Plus, bizarrely, has more USBs on it than the uh, Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Primarily down to the fact that it's got Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi ports on the Gaming Plus are USB ports. What a nose. Hashtag blame Dave. Uh, James Mercedes says, regarding software changing over time, always keep a legacy installer for some useful software. The latest TeamViewer portable builds require accounts or there's a time limit on remote. Hmm. You can get some of that stuff from oldversion.com, which is quite handy. I've done that before for um, Partition Magic, the old version of that. Uh, BB Lightfoot uh, MSI Z590-A Pro with 11500K has been great for me. Good to hear it. And Curved Monitor as well are very nice. Uh, well, Bill says the MX Master Series is great. It's just a shame they don't do a left hand. Yes. Um, I've actually got... The uh, Rapu, the MT750, which Bob sent me ages ago. This is going to hurt. This is going to break stuff, I can tell. I'm a semi-professional unboxer. So this is the uh, Rapu, or Rapu. I don't like that name. Um, the MT750L. So this is basically a Logitech MX Master version 3 ripoff. I can't review it. I really can't review it because it's a right-handed mouse. I've really struggled to actually physically hold it. I can hold it in my right hand and I can just about use it, but I'm not right-handed. I'm left-handed. So actually, I can't tell how good it is. And using things like the wheel on the side is extremely hard for me to do because I just most people, you've got that kind of muscle memory. And also there's two buttons on the front there which... I probably could make use of, but I can't do it with that hand because it's just super uncomfortable, which is a real shame because it actually looks like this mouse does it all. Like Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, you can use it wired as well. 
I think it's on the Type C connection as well, if I remember rightly, or is that USB? I oh, know it's micro USB. But yeah, there's got so many buttons on it, it'd actually be really handy. Especially for video editing, for like scrubbing down the timeline, that'd be amazing. But it's just, yeah, I, um, when it comes to like an ambidextrous mouse, I can, I can cope with that. But this, because it's contoured, it just doesn't, it just feels really weird to me. Uh, William Bodie says, so Kath will have to do a review on it with a bag over her head. We used to have a bag over our head. I did consider that. SSX, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. So at some point I'm going to have to do something with that. Or I'm, I might, next time that, uh, I have to send something back to Bob, I might send him this as well so we can actually make use of it. I, f I feel bad of it just being on the shelf. I really do. It's one of those things that I keep on seeing and I'm thinking, oh, I really should try and use that. But every time I do, I just frustrate myself. I did actually do a, a very brief short on it. So it's not as if it hasn't seen the light of day. And I have actually tried to use it, but I just, I just can't do it. I'm not built for it. <laughs> as, as much as I try. Yeah, where is Bob? He's passed out, hasn't he? He always does this. Bless his heart. Right, what time is it? Uh, oh, actually, oh, I've taken it off there, haven't I? I haven't got one anymore. Right, I think that should uh, wrap things up. We've been going on for over two hours now, isn't it? Or is it an hour and a half? When did I start? Half past eight? No, 20 past eight. 20 past 8, 20 past 9, 20 past 10. It's really 20 past 11. Blow me. Yeah, that's going on. Lord Erectus is going to go mad. Yeah, Lord Erectus is going to have to watch all this nonsense now. Right. I think that is going to do it. Um, thank you all so much for joining us on this Saturday evening. Um, I'm glad the audio has been a success. Genuinely, actual worried about that. And I'm still not too sure. I still don't know what to do about the cam link, whether or not I should just send it back in just go with a two camera setup which might be easier it is really nice to be able to plumb in the uh like when i was firing up the motherboard then just so i can put it straight through just by pressing the button that's super helpful but it's an expensive way of doing it for that extra flexibility which i probably could do easier elsewhere or even just point the camera at a screen that might be easier anyway thank you all so much for joining us on this saturday evening i didn't even know what day it was uh the saturday the 27th of August 2022. I can't believe there are shops in the UK which are starting to get their Christmas stuff in. Unbelievable. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the super chats. Calf says goodbye and she's shaking her bits at you. If that's, You can probably see that in the reflection of the screen. If you pause it or watch the playback, you can see her doing it in the screen. Honestly, because I think it's aimed in the right way, so... Do rewind the video after and see if you can see her doing that. <laughs> now, you'll regret that now. <laughs> right. I'll be Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And uh, we will catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Now I've got to remember how to do this game now. Um, how do I do this? Oh, yeah. Stop stream. Night all.